Deception is a right. Truth is a privilege. Innocence is a luxury. Born of the U.S. government's 1928 raid on the degenerate coastal town of Innsmouth, Massachusetts, the covert agency known as Delta Green opposes the forces of darkness with honor, but without glory. Delta Green agents slip through the system, manipulating the federal bureaucracy while pushing the darkness back for another day, but often at a shattering personal cost. This is a dirge for the end of the world, a Delta Green campaign of modern horror, conspiracy, and personal apocalypse. I am Eric, at Maron Recluse on Twitter, your handler for this terrifying tale. Due to the mature themes of horror and violence explored in our tale, we encourage listener discretion. We are Horrible Tales, and we play a wide assortment of games seven days a week that fall into two categories, Awesome Adventures and Terrifying Tales. To know more about our many games, be sure to check the calendar on warpletales.com to stay up to date with all of our shows. Also check out Arc Dream Publishing's suite of tabletop RPGs and supplements on arcdream.com, where you can get a physical or digital copy of awesome games like Delta Green. Vorpal Tales is also on Drive-Thru RPG, by the way. Uh, check out some of our very own Vorpal Tales supplements that include characters, monsters, and scenarios made for many of the games that we play weekly. Remember to follow Vorpal Tales on Twitch and visit our website to uh, find a link to join our Discord. We are on most major me social media outlets, including YouTube, where you can catch up on previous episodes. So remember to follow, subscribe, and hit the bell to get all the updates. We want to thank Arc Dream Publishing for making awesome games like Delta Green for us to play and for providing support to their players. Also, a very special thanks to Astral Tabletop, the super deluxe burrito on online tabletop gaming. Special music credit go shout shoutouts go to Dark Somnium Music, Least Upper Bound, and Repulsive Sound for the use of their excellent ambience and music tracks, as well as our uh, resident rock star Tyler for the awesome uh, theme music you heard during the reel. For more awesome tunes, check out the secretpress.bandcamp.com and on YouTube, Instagram, and, and SoundCloud under Repulsive Sound. Uh, and also, very special thanks to Adnate Mid for helping to design many of our uh, super awesome character sheets for Astral. And last but not least, of course, a warm thanks to our listeners and fans for tuning in. Our agents and friendlies are ready for another night at the opera. Players, tell our audience who you are, where they can find you online, and who you will be playing this evening. Beginning with uh, Sean. Oh, crap. I'm first. Um, hey there. I am at Space Lord PJs. And tonight I will be playing the computer scientist Joe Big Papa Flanagan. Excellent. Uh, Devin. Uh, hi, all. I'm Devin. You can find me online at Sword of Sullied. And tonight I am playing Megan Spots, aka White Lady. Awesome. Panda. Hi, I'm Panda. You can find me at various places as at Vepples. And today I'm going to be playing Anemone Gilman, whom everyone is insisting that she needs to call herself Agent Weber. And she's having a little bit of a problem with that. But she'll get the hang of it soon. No doubt. Uh, and Ever? Oh, sorry, uh, Ambrose. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Ambrose. My pronouns are he or they. You can find me all over the internet as Am Changeling because it me, Am Changeling. You can also find me on Etsy at Neat and Co Designs. And tonight I shall be playing Daniel Jackson, who is totally not a knockoff of Stargate, and his agent name is Agent Wild. Excellent, excellent. All right. Now for a short recap of what happened previously, uh, as broken down by. Uh, True Kisama, agent surveillance report. Agent Walter's wife went out of her way to make roasted duck for her family. Reports show that the duck was not well seasoned. Agent Winnebago's daughter has noticed redacted. Agent Winnebago seems to have handled the situation to the best of his ability. End of report. <laughs> Case report. The cell began investigating the alleged alien abduction of Lindsey Grimes in Apollo Park near Lake Havens. They find little actually regarding Grimes, instead finding what appears to be an unknown organism. Additionally, agents Wild and Walter had found a mysterious hole in the ground, and agents White and Winnebago had found a concentrated pile of the organism, but that sample was abandoned at the investigation site. A smaller sample was taken off of Agent Weber following a deep investigation of the lake. 
Agent Weber also reported a substance in the lake making it difficult for her to breathe after emerging from it. Addendum. A helicopter was heard circling the park. The cell thought nothing of it. Lab experimentation conducted by Agent Wilde and Agent Weber showed that the organism uh, is capable of mimicking the appearance of other organisms it makes contacts with. Experimentation with the organism was stopped prematurely as a breach of containment was imminent. And Agent White had disposed of the organism using electricity, the resulting smoke triggering the smoke alarm. Agent Walter was able to provide a cover story to the local authorities as Agent Weber cleaned up the lab site. Following the cleaning, the cell came to the conclusion that these organisms are servitors designed to serve the MIGO. Begin, they began questioning if Lindsey Grimes was one of these servitors, pretending to be the real Grimes, and prepared to conduct a deeper investigation of the park. Thank you, Key, for your breakdown, uh, if you're watching. And uh, now we return to Spokane, Washington, where our cell was last seen in the uh, hotel room, uh, conducting uh, said experiments of the this um, proto-synthetic entity. A small fire had broken out uh, in the bathroom, uh, which was uh, quickly put out by our team and the smoke alarm was going off and Agent, uh, Agent Walter was tasked with the unenviable job of having to uh, uh, pacify the, uh, the concierge and such and so on. Uh, so we'll return back to them uh, at the scene at the hotel. Agent Winnebago, you uh, you remember being at home with your daughter at some point or another and finding those um, those post-it notes that you kept leaving yourself. Okay. And to your shock and surprise, you actually found one that had a response. <laughs> <laughs> one right. But you don't remember. Huh? Yeah, but and you're not you're not sure if it was your daughter or not. Um, you don't remember if it was Annette or if this was the other side of you okay. that had responded. What's the uh, but it was basically look like? <laughs> it basically looked like your handwriting. It just oh. looked a little bit different. Um, right brain, left brain, whatever. Um, yeah, it sort of seemed familiar to you, but at the same time, it was like I don't remember writing that. Um, but it was basically it, it basically summed up the the conversation where you you know you would say something like what's up and you know the response was like not much what's up <laughs> you know like that kind of thing uh so you've been having this sort of uh back and forth for the last six months and uh one day you're at home and then the next day you wake up in a hotel room and there's shouting going on outside in the hallway and there's a smoke alarm going off and you smell what can only you you think it's like cordite or something like that that you're smelling uh, like a burning cardboard box or something like that is the only thing way that you can uh okay explain it and you're just like in this moment of confusion and you realize that you're it's happening again you're back in control but when you're looking around you're just like you don't remember anything uh, any of this you're in an operation apparently because when you look around you see all these other people present minus uh, Agent Warlock. <laughs> but you hear like something's happening in this hotel room. How do you respond? Uh, like it sounds like there's a, um, a, a fire alarm going off, you said? Is that? Yeah, okay. the smoke alarm is like beep, 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 beep. And like there's all sorts of shouting and commotion going on around you. Agent Weber is seemingly naked except for a uh, bed sheet that's wrapped around her body. And <laughs> she's otherwise she's dripping wet on the carpet. Uh, and there's a whole, there's just a whole bunch of commotion going on, and it's like complete chaos as you're coming to. He's like in boxers and sand. No, he's in a nice pair of pajamas and sandals. Um, <laughs> yeah. He takes his hat, whatever that would be, um, and just kind of walks outside. And he, uh, I get does he carry a gun? I guess he carries a gun. No, he, he's Kung Fu dude, so he doesn't need a gun. <laughs> so he walks out uh, of the of his hotel room. We're in a hotel, you said, right? Or is it a motel? Yeah, it's a hotel. Hotel. Um, nice just, hotel. Just kind of looks down the hallway. 
like does both ways where does the the sound seem to be coming from it seems to be coming from agent uh walter he's just kind of like it's okay guys everything's fine and you see the hotel staff is just like what the hell's going on over here you see uh, one of the uh the hotel manager you assume is like on the phone like he's like what the fuck is going on over here i need to call the like the fire department or something he's like no 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 it's it's fine like grandma just had to have some of her marlboros for her birthday and the stripper the whole thing got out of control i'm sorry but it's okay it's all it's all under control everything's fine uh thank you <laughs> um when they go is gonna walk up to the hotel manager and just flash her in a badge and be like food and drug administration uh we were you know oh. we're gonna invest investigate this so and <laughs> you're in, you in my pajamas on. i'm gonna investigate this. yeah gonna... go ahead and roll um oh yeah that's go right. ahead and roll exposure please roll a d6 exposure thing God. yeah you're shoot. currently at two so I'm let's see if we, uh, my mouth off. it shoots up it shoots up to three now <laughs> two. Oh, oh, look at that all right so you're like it you know, food and drug safety. We're, we're everything's fine here. <laughs> and you see, Agent Walter is like, "Oh shit, <laughs> uh, Agent Walter, how do you respond to uh, Winnebago coming out in his pajamas and waving a badge?" <clears throat> uh, uh, there's really no reason for you, but if you must see, Officer, come right this way. <laughs> yeah, I need to investigate this uh, refrigerator issue. <clears throat> what, what the hell's yeah, going on? Yeah, I'm a on? big fan of law enforcement. <laughs> Oh, I'm not. <laughs> um, what the what the hell's going on? Yeah, you're just like yeah, you're completely confused as to what's happening. But apparently, you were a part of it because you you don't know how much time has passed. But you're looking around, and it's like it's obviously you guys are on on, a, on some sort of an operation. Uh, you just you're completely gone to the details at the moment. All right, so anema 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 uh tried to take a bath, started screaming. Uh, pyromaniac just tried to electrocute everybody, something like that. I don't know. <laughs> the firefighter started a fire. Where did we get a pyromaniac? <laughs> she was here the whole time, really? Huh, Winter Fuego. Seriously, have you not figured that out yet? Wait, <laughs> cold fire. Wait, whose code name is Cold Fire? That is dope. That is pretty dope. I don't know. Winter Fuego? Okay. Nobody here, President. Okay. Wait, that's not your code back. name? I'm cleaning things up. Wait, that's not your code name? No. No. <laughs> it's Winter Bagel. I mean, Winnebago. Winter Bagel. Got yeah. it. Got it. You uh, shop, you see, um, uh, wearing uh, a Agent... bedspread toga. <laughs> yeah. A considerably toga. more fishy than she previously appeared to you now that most of the makeup's been scrubbed off. Huh. Cool. She's looking around in a wet vac and she's Fish got something that. inside of the wet vac she wants to lock up. Uh, so the, you, it looked like everybody was in the process of like vacating the uh, the hotel room when you came to suddenly. Uh, so people are like, you know, grabbing baggage and moving stuff around and shit and <laughs> trying to put everything back to where it was. Right. So. Um, Pyromaniac set the hotel room on fire, right? That, that mm -hmm. that's what's going no, on. No, no, I then... just stopped. Yeah, I stopped the mimics. Okay. It got in my gills. <laughs> like, how do you not remember? Non-consensually, any... what's going? Oh, what is going this? on? No, I'm caught up. How how Jordan? But you were you were there, right? Yeah, I was there. I remember. Yeah, I don't remember what happens a lot of the time, too, when it's not referencing me. So, right. yeah, it's all good. I took a nap. Yes, Just, it was non-consensually you know, in my You were awake. No, no. Well, sure. Yeah, but I was napping with my eyes open standing here. Don't think I've consented to have anything but in like my What he remembers ever. is not the thing we should be worrying about. Here. Right. See, listen to, <laughs> listen to this are, ranger are over here. Did someone see where my bag is? And are you sure about my Amazon packages? <laughs> you see, uh, Cooper's like, sweetheart, we gotta go. And she's like, he's like waving everybody over. And he's like, uh, when a bagel, can you grab, can you be helpful here and just grab some of the slurs to get it out of here? We gotta move. Uh, yeah. Does somebody sure. know where Agent Warlock is? Jesus Christ, stop answering his phone. 
He's we don't need him. Probably doing warlock type things, I suppose. Right. So, all right, grabs bags and starts following Cooper. Oh, the moon's in Dagon. Have you checked the beach? Wait, the the, the, the moon's in what? If you if you roll an unnatural and, uh, and you succeed, you know exactly what she's talking about. <laughs> I, I, I want to try it just for the hell of it. Sure. I do not know what she means. I know yeah, better no, than to try it. No idea. No idea at all. <laughs> See, Cooper uh, goes he's like, "I'm gonna go check on Warlock or Dila. Get these clowns out of here. Get them in the car. And we can we need to vacate the premises immediately." So. I'm going to need some shatterproof vacuum um, sealed borosilicate glass containment vessels. <laughs> Cordelia just sort of blinks like, sure, after we get out of here. <laughs> Black trash bags. Well, there's nothing you can't do with a trash bag and duct tape. You're, are you Believe me, okay? I grew up around water tanks in an extremely underfunded facility. Again, you not again. Grow up in water tanks. Let's, you know, we'll we'll, we'll talk about this later. I, I think we should probably head out. Wise. Anemone is just hugging the shop vac whenever they get into a vehicle to stop it from sloshing around. <laughs> nice. Yeah, you pack up everything, and uh, Cooper is uh, surprisingly late to the party. When you guys meet all, you all meet up at the SUV outside and start getting your stuff ready. Um, he comes down. It's like Agent Warlock disappeared. I checked his room. There's nobody in there. Maybe the mimics ate him. If Don't you see say him again, shit like that... that. If we see him again, does that mean that we have to tase him? <laughs> we probably should for good measure, <laughs> right? That that like the, a... the I list. mean, that's a good way of testing. <laughs> it's a good plan. I like it. Um, we'll each take turns tasing him. You know, we probably shouldn't have shit lists of our uh, co-workers. <laughs> just, just going to put that out there. Yeah. Probably a while That's true. Self. We might get in trouble with HR. Note to self. Don't <laughs> let do we Dan... even have an HR? Don't let... Oh, yes, you do. I believe their names are Smith and Wesson. <laughs> you get a point for that. Um, <laughs> all right. So... <laughs> But he piles into the SUV and it's like, all right, get us out of here, Cordelia. Please save us. And she, you know, uh, drives off onto the main road and she's like, all right, we need to secure this freaking thing, whatever it is, whatever that thing is in that wet back back there. I uh, told you, boris silicate, vacuum sealed, and ideally shockproof. Do we have a green box we can we can hold out at with it? Hmm. Yes. See, she's like, follow. He's like, um, she's like, I know, I know a place, and she starts driving around. Uh, she, um, she get Cooper gets on the horn to Barnabas though, which is not usually something that happens. Usually, you wait the forty-eight hours, report back to him what happened, and you have a sit down. He's calling Barnabas though. <laughs> he's like, hey, um, we may have a potential situation here. And you overhear Barnabas on the other end, like, how so? Warlocks disappeared. Okay, he does that. Yeah, with the suitcase. Come again? The suitcase containing the, uh, you know, the tapes, the transcripts, everything regarding John Cross. He's not at the hotel. Unclear if there was forced entry. We're leaving right now. Something happened. We came across some sort of an entity at the lake, near Lake Hades. Um... Don't know what it is. Whatever it is, is some sort of mimic. He shocked uh, Agent uh, White shocked it to death. There was a small fire. We shot back the shit out of it. We need um. It was probably two mimics. Here. <laughs> two mimics, yeah. Tending to be one. Well, I mean, that's maybe a it was just one split up and ask. two. When it's no. in the form of a gelatinous goo, does it count as one entity total, or does each individual puddle count as a separate entity? It I guess you can find out soon because all of it is inside the, the shop bag right now. Yeah. Well, it's also been it slightly cooked, it? which has a tendency to damage cell membranes. So I'm not sure how much of the sample we're going to be able to analyze. Also, when I last looked at our um, office, although I would say the espresso machine was very good, I did not see much of a qualified wet lab there. 
No, you did not. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to be working somewhat. Well, basically, it's going to look like my play kitchen. Well, you don't want the lab to be wet. Otherwise, you're slipping around. They used everywhere. to give me leftover equipment to play with. Got to put mm -hmm. those little stanchions just... up. But, you know. So where is the nearby aquarium? See, they just gave you equipment. Yeah, uh, I would make small cookies on a Bunsen burner. <laughs> you know, there, there's it, ovens for that. Play kitchen, all right? <laughs> all right it's normal. Every, all, every kid had one, right? Please stop I making bringing up weird facts about my See, Cooper's like, buddy. Shh, got the chatter. You see, he's like, what do you mean? Okay, we're heading towards a, a green box right now. We need to uh, get rid of this thing, whatever it is, put it in storage. You want us to turn around? You want us to go where? And he, and Cordillo's like, what's happening? It's like, turn around. We're going the up wrong way. He's like, you need to head over to the marina. Okay. So they start heading down towards the, uh, the coastline. There's a storage place there. Um, this is happening in, I want to say this was happening later in the day. Uh, you had finished your little excursion at the, at the park. So it started to get, um, this is nighttime, probably by the time you reach the marina. So it's dark outside. He gets out and he's, uh, he's like, wait in the car for a second. He comes back after a few minutes, he comes back with a key to be acquired from looking around. And he's like, all right, take us into the storage area over here. She comes up, punches in a code that she gives it, that he gives her doors open up, you roll in and it's just a series of storage bays. You know, for people who are moving or whatever, storage depot. So he put, he's like, "This one right here, stop." She stops the car, and she she's waiting in the vehicle. Uh, Cooper's like, "All right, get everything out of the back, including the wet back. We're gonna put it inside this locker here, inside the storage uh, area." You're also, gonna need this too, right? Um, and Nemini yes, would hold up a it. large size Ziploc bag full of the clothing she was wearing when she went swimming. Um, Ziploc together. Yep, everything that may have been contaminated goes in there immediately. All right, for anyone who has felt the allure of science that they do not understand and may have kept a sample for themselves, please do place it in the containment facility. We do not want any incidents. I don't have any code forms right now for that. <laughs> the Cooper just goes right on ahead. He uses the key, opens up the thing, throws open the door. Um, there's a lot of stuff in here uh, a lot of stuff and folded up boxes and stacked on top of each other i'm going to volunteer to be the dumb labor doing the hauling and i am going to snoop a little bit but not too much i'm just gonna look for anything that obviously looks recognizable to me and my people uh, do you gasp when the when you look inside Ro uh you roll be like hands or... in pockets <laughs> Roll search or alertness, whichever is highest for you. Is anybody else getting out of the car? Um, Cordelia is staying in, but is anyone getting out of the vehicle and going into the storage bay? I'm rolling yeah. alertness because that's highest. I'm going to walk in and hand deliver the uh, electric board. And I got a 56, which is below my 60. Like Excellent. You notice something in. interesting in the corner in one of the boxes, and you just kind of do like a double take. And you have to like set stuff down and it's almost drawing you in. You're like, you can't help but look at it. You know how uh, when you pass by something that interests you, you kind of give it like once over. Sec the second time you, you look a little bit longer and by probably by the third time you're just like in front of it looking down at it. Uh, this one in particular seems to be some sort of a statue. I'm gonna a, see if a... I can stealth being useful um, to take a peek at it. All right, if anybody uh, else is getting out of the car, you can roll your alertness versus stealth because obviously stuff that's inside the storage is meant to be staying in storage. <laughs> right. Cooper's gonna roll as well. Um, I didn't do too well with my stealth. Know. I got a five out of 26. You definitely spotted me eyeballing <laughs> this. I got a 91. 37 out of 51. Ooh, five out of 51. Ooh, nice. So those of you who rolled are inside the, the storage bay, presumably, because how else would you be able to see this? Mm -hmm. Um, into Winnebago. Hmm. Uh, you know that you catch her looking through some box of, of some stuff and you're like, hey! And then when you look at the box, you see something in there as well that kind of like makes your head tilt a little bit. Um, it's a circuit board. I'm oblivious. 
You're oblivious. You just, are you in the car? Or you're just sending. Oh, I, I walked in, but I, I my stealth is a ten, and I rolled a twenty-two. Yeah. Okay, okay. You watch everybody kind of walk in and like you know uh, moving around. Didn't you say it was um, uh, roll alertness? Yeah, it's alertness, oh, alertness to or spot search, me new thing. Your highest. Is there anything there that looks oh, like my cultural fail. patrimony or information about my people? Yeah, like you said, a statue. statue. Yeah, it looks like it's damaged, whatever it is, but it seems to, the, the form of it and the makeup of it seems to almost be made out of, like, jade. But the closer you look at it, it's too porous for it. Like, when you run your, your fingers uh, through it and stuff, and when you touch it, it seems to have uh, more of a um, rocky, rough texture to it. It's almost like green coral instead. And the form that you're looking at is pretty significant. Uh, it's a little crude on the crude side, but it, obviously it's damaged. So you don't get the full details of it, but it seems to suggest a large entity of some sort. Uh, very similar uh, looking um, uh, hands and feet to what you would you have yourself. I immediately leave it B, making a incomprehensible sign that anyone can do an unnatural check for if they want to, mm -hmm. and make a mental note where this storage area is for later. <laughs> do you did you actually pick it up and examine it, or did you just leave it at, um, look at a distance and left it alone? She feels that if she picks it up and examines it, she's not good enough at lying. She's very tempted to do the thing of licking her fingers and touching it, but she resists this time. But if huh. no one stops her, she will find a way to come back. Yeah, you, you're looking at around like, I get away with pocketing this thing and everybody's looking at you for a second. Like, what are you doing? Um, Agent, oh, uh, yes, there's lots of interesting things here. Don't worry, there's nothing that would immediately cause you to go insane. Do not put <laughs> that in your mouth, though. Uh, Agent Winnebago. What's that? What did you want to do while you're in here? You see this happening. Uh, you said there was like a circuit board or something? Yeah, there's a weird like little circuit board and like it's attached to something else. It looks like, it looks very weird. You're not sure what's it, what it is at first. You take a closer look at it and it appears to be a light bulb screwed onto a, a little um, contraption that is uh, in itself attached to uh, uh, like a circuit board looking thing with like wires and there's a little red button. Do you have to plug that into a lemon to power it with copper and zinc rods? I don't know. Let's find out. Hits the button. I hit you... the deck over the statue <laughs> trying to protect it. <laughs> she dives for cover. You push the button, it lights up. Oh, cool. Give me an alertness check, please. Oh, God. Not so great that time. You, you failed? I failed, yes. Did, okay. Did you want to use any of your rerolls or no? Uh, yeah, I'll reroll once. Yeah. Cool. That one, that, that one works. That one worked. Oh, so fun fun fact. Uh, you're like, hey, it lights up. That's pretty cool. It's not getting any power from anywhere, though. Like, it's not plugged into anything. There's no power source. It's just the, the circuit board, wires, uh, the little platform thing, and like the light bulb and little button. It's all relayed together, you know? Huh. And you're like, huh, that's weird. And you push it again, lights up. And then you realize, did this shit turn on before I push the button? Roll what? sanity. Oh. <clears throat> oh. Um, well, I'm watching him do this ridiculousness. <clears throat> I take off my hoodie, wrap it around the statue, and then charge him at the legs where he should be weakest to see if I can knock him away from the doohickey. Absolute failure, Eric. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, you... Um, My oh, dice is all zeros. Dice is all zeros today, huh? So you failed the sanity check? Yeah, by 100%. You rolled a oh. 100? Yes. Oh, cool. You lose four nice. sanity instantly. I lose four sanity? Yep. And you're like, no, I, cool I pushed, light bulb? Like, what the hell was that? <laughs> what the fuck? I, like, and you're just like, no, I, I pushed, I, I pushed, I pushed the button. And that's when, uh, Anemone's like, ha! <laughs> you straight up, like, bowl him over. 
<laughs> yes, I will use my combat if I need to. I am getting him out of that storage locker before he boops anything else under the pretext that he needs to be protected from this. You're completely absorbed into what's going on here, um, Winnebago. So by the time she tackles you, you have uh, the typical response when you fail your your uh, sanity uh, roll. You either just, you're just like, no, this is wrong. And you destroy it or you run away. Like, what the fuck is that? No, I'm out of here. Or you just stand there blinking at it. Like, that's not possible. Uh, I feel like Winnebago would just stand there blinking at it. Like, that's, that's weird. <laughs> When she inevitably knocks you over, <laughs> uh, do you try to retain control of the circuit board, or do you just like, uh No, you don't get. He'd let it go. It's just okay. weird. It clatters into the onto the floor and onto many things, and you hear like the light bulb shatter and shit. Um, and you both go tumbling off to the side. Everybody sees this now. Cordelia's just kind of like, oh shit, what am I getting into here? Cooper's like, whoa, what the fuck? What's going on here? I just asked Don't you to push put the stuff any inside. buttons. Don't push any buttons. That's the first <laughs> thing you learn. Don't push any buttons they give you to push until they shock you. Well, if you don't push the buttons, how do you know what's going to happen? <laughs> Are there any buttons? You in get my shocked. It always area. means you get shocked. You get shocked or you get a treat. What? Wow. <laughs> what are you saying, uh, Devin? Did they keep Are there any the buttons what in my hell? media area? <laughs> No other <laughs> buttons here. No, uh, there's a light memory. switch in the middle of the room. You know, like to turn on the, the sole light bulb. Right. I will walk over there and switch it, just for the hell of it, twice. Going back click, to the click. van. You guys are all. Anemone, can you please stop telling us about your terrifying childhood? <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Oh, um, I'm sure geez. he didn't mean it like that. Uh, oh, it's terrifying. <laughs> I, it it does sound it sounds terrifying. Um, just the you know the the way that that you're explaining it, it sounds like they kept you captive and they didn't treat you very nice. And you were experimented. Yes, I was a lab upon. rat. My people were experimented on and exterminated by the U.S. government. Welcome to yeah, that tracks. You see, uh, like, Cooper nods. <laughs> yeah, he's like, all right. Um, there is something here. There is a purpose to why Barnabas had us come here. It not wasn't just to drop this off. And he points to the wet back in the corner. And the contaminated stuff. He's like, there. He says, "It's um, really not a good way to store it. Among many uh, things, well, it's going to moisture contaminate everything else when this, it starts to evaporate." This shit is old. What he's having us look for. And he's like, um, "I need to find uh, some solvent." He said in here. Uh, All right, it's, I'm going to go gonna looking labeled. for solvent in the crazy cabinet. Yeah, it's. Uh, he tries to explain what he's uh, getting at, essentially. Uh, he's like, it is called he calls it uh, neo tissue, the neo tissue liquid. It's oh, labeled it's... as such. Uh, could you help me find it? So we can the life get out of here, please. Um, do you know what it looks like? Like how big it is, or do you have an example of the bottle or the container? Am I looking for a drum? Is this diluted? Uh, he didn't specify. It's somewhere in here. And he looks around the room and it's like littered with boxes and tubs and stuff like that. It looks like okay. there's a thick, thick layer of dust everywhere. Like if, if you have like allergies of any sort, they're all, it, everything's going off at once. When you get in, you're like, oh God, keep the door open. Yeah. All right. I am volunteering to start looking around these things and do the heavy lifting for it. I will commandeer one of the boxes that doesn't look like it has to hold things and mm -hmm. like move things around using my strength sure. and fairly high alertness score to look. Now, this is the search roll. Um, you you will it. automatically succeed. Search. That's all right. If uh, You will automatically succeed. But if you don't make the search roll, it takes time to find this thing because there's a ton. I of am OK with it taking time. Yeah, so no biggie if, if you lose a little bit of time. I did not make, actually, no, I made the search roll with a um, 7%. Shit. Look at that. Okay, so Anemone's like, I'm on it, unless she starts looking around. And uh, sure enough, you start digging through some stuff and, and you ask questions like, uh, what year is this from? It's like, uh, 1998, 99? And you start looking at like the labels on the boxes and stuff. Like, you eventually find one that's labeled 1999. It's This is the, the big old ass green box you bust it open. And inside is a, a, a assortment of things. It's like this big 
big ammo box. And um, when you look through, there's various things. It's like you would find in a typical green box. There's wads of cash. There's a bag of drugs. There's some bullets. Uh, there's like some snacks that have uh, some cans of like beanie weenies or whatever, like non-perishables. And then you come to, up around this one thing of uh, these water bottles, uh, you know, these little water squirt bottle things um, that you use mm -hmm. like water your plants or whatever. Mr. But there's this weird, uh, like grayish looking liquid inside and it's labeled uh, Neo Tissue Solvent. I'm going to check the best before dates of the non-perishable food or at least the manufacture date when they're near them to give me an idea of when this was produced. Or at least oh, when this it was, was produced a long time ago. It's been sitting here for like a decade, so it's probably not any good anymore. Are we perhaps. talking fifties? No, not that far back. Probably like late nineties. Nineteen nineties plastic. Two thousand. Mm, early okay, to mid two thousands. Yeah. Oh, early two okay. thousands. Yeah, might be a little Ooh, questionable, with, but otherwise, yeah. Still, happy uh, snacks edible. with micro beads. <laughs> sure. Uh, um, yeah, you have that there in addition to the solvents. And there's like several bottles, it's like five or six little bottles like I this. I make sure to gather everything up. Um, I If there's anything that I can use to pack it with, I pack mm -hmm. it accordingly. Um, mm -hmm. I have my little bundle. At the In the box is the hoodie wrapped statue below the bottles being helpful. Excellent. You got all the stuff gathered together. Um, Cooper's like, all right. He, you know, he's still on the phone with Barnaby. He's like, we found it. All right. What now? Okay. Uh, all right. I, I don't know if anybody got contaminated. Uh, Agent Weber was in the bathtub with, with the entity. Uh, she's the only one that I know of that came into physical contact with this stuff. There was another person who decided it was a good idea to touch it. And I pointed out to the person who thought they should poke it. All right. This would mean um, that I am pointing at poor um, Winnebago. <laughs> uh you're like winnebago is just like what what's happening <laughs> you don't remember touching it have you been replaced by a mimic we could test the solvent on you you see he's like is that what this shit does I see. yeah um remember how i poured some alcohol into that the well the cell structures of different life forms can be disrupted with different chemical things um mm -hmm. Well, you and I would be considered largely carbon-based life forms with a standard protein structure. Some other life forms are disruptible with different things. There's also one particular thing where they have a customized prion that causes them to decay slowly and painfully. He says that, yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah, I think you're onto something there. And that seems to be what Barnabas was alluding to. Apparently this liquid produces a sort of purple blush or stain when it comes into contact with this neo tissue. Um, it's How long kind does of it a, take? Uh, it's come off. almost pretty much. Oh, I, that I don't know. Um, it's pretty viscous from what he says. Um, it's sometimes this stuff, what, whatever this neo tissue stuff is, he says it's called, otherwise known as a sort of like a proto matter. Um, this liquid usually lasts at least two or three minutes. Um, it was deployed once upon a time in these spray bottles for a different case, similar servitors, I guess you can call them, in a place called Groversville. Uh, it's an aniline dye solution. And, and like when you open it up and, or he opens one of the bottles up and he's, he's like, oh God, it's, it's like, it smells like rotten fish. You you hear that and you think it smells like, oh, this smells great. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> uh, see mm. it's like it's don't gonna be come nice into and soft <laughs> yeah he's like whatever he advises that we don't uh prolong contact with it with to anybody uh so for us at least we have to handle it with gloves because it's toxic otherwise well with, okay with, uh, prolonged so contact. when you're saying not prolonged contact is it a solvent that will dissolve through things like rubber as well because it's not good for biological life forms because this is important um when we order the gloves Mm. Yeah, he's like, it should be okay to use with gloves just as long as you don't get it on the skin. That's Are you sure toxic. about that? Do you know about the permeability of standard lab gloves by Mercury? I can bring up the case for you if you want. He's like, uh, you see, um, Cooper's like, I I have no idea. Barnabas was there, apparently. 
So he knows best about this sort of thing. Apparently he's dealt with, with the, these things before. Uh, that's what he's advising us to do, at least for right now. Rubber gloves, I think, should be fine, is what he says. Does anyone here have a latex allergy? Are we going with nitrile? <laughs> uh, they were good. <laughs> he's like... Um, Use that line in years. <laughs> um, is there anything else anybody wants to do in the... Uh, storage before you leave it behind. You want to do anything with the wet vac and the proto matter being that's inside of it? I was going to look um, for a weapon of some kind in here. If there's still a proto being inside there, I am going to Ooh. apply a spritz of this to the inside of the wet vac after putting on a pair of gloves. Yeah, sure I want to watch. Some... Okay, you. you I didn't uh... expect them still to be alive because they got cooked, mm. but this is an interesting lesson in how it reacts. Okay, so you take out the the bag that's holding and, and the wet bag that's holding the the entity, and you want to yeah. like take a peek at it or <laughs> jostle it around. Or I just spray, spray it, it in first. All right, you spray it in first. It doesn't seem to be irritated by it. It's just a funny thing about it. It is toxic apparently to humans, but when you spray this onto the the thing, it just it moves around a little bit. You can feel it inside the bag, um, but it otherwise doesn't scream like it did when it was electrified earlier when agent white uh stuck the, the cord into the uh into the water from the outlet um this containment process of holding something in a wet vac which is not vacuum sealed in any way is not an adequate containment for a life form that's capable of mimicry particularly leaving it through an unsecured storage container of artifacts are you really giving a um eldritch species servant um that may or may not be able to leave this environment complete access to a random dump zone, which will probably include things like case notes that it will be able to backtrace to understand about our organization. Oh, we're, we're just leaving it here for the, the quarantine group. <laughs> That's what Barnabas said. As How for you and the rest going of the to team, be here? Uh, probably within the next 12 hours or so. Yeah. I don't know how much of this material there is, but it's got enough to um, reconstitute an eyeball. Mm -hmm. And if I can do that, it's capable of reading things and manipulating and crawling into things. I don't know its ability to travel around in environments, but this is not a physically secured area. This needs to be in a solid container. You could probably hold it in if someone could get me a ball mason jar if you can't find anything else. <laughs> But we should not be yeah. leaving it just in a wet dry vac. That's good for transporting it, but not for... Well, it hasn't left yet. Uh, he's looking at the yes, wet Yes, but it's surrounded bag, by people. But... True. You can hear us, uh, you know. This is... Well, we don't know. Uh, he, he's just like... Uh, that's one reason why Cordelia is staying with a flamethrower. Um, and while we are going to be going elsewhere... Um, Are there more than one flamethrower? <laughs> He's like, no, uh, uh, Barnabas assured me that there is a flamethrower in here and Cordelia is going to be overwatch for this particular device, this particular entity. Um, and uh, you see- All right, um, so I cart my little spray box away, having been assured that they've got it well in hand, setting things on fire almost always works. Mm-hmm. Uh, Agent Walter, Agent White, is there anything you wanted to do while you were at the storage facility before Cooper's like, all right, Cordelia, you're staying, we're leaving. <laughs> um, yeah, I did. So I the other thing that I'd be yeah. interested in acquiring would be some liquid nitrogen that's properly compressed for the purposes of quick freezing things, <clears> because if we encounter another water environment where this is in, we'll be able to immobilize it by freezing it. Since it's clearly not damaged by applying a direct household current to it, then at least it would be unable to move further until it defrosts. These things are probably not capable of traveling up into large areas. So the good news is that they take over the world. Canada should be pretty safe. <laughs> sure it is. Noted. Just, just, just ask M. Epic. Um, uh. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and roll search. Um, Agent White, Agent Walter, while this is happening and you're looking around for stuff, there isn't anything, any of that like here. <laughs> uh, mm. In real life, I don't know where you would you probably make a medical uh, store of some sort to get something like that, and you need the license and whatnot. Um, yeah, I was looking for a so weapon. You see, you're looking for a weapon. Yeah. Ne uh, liberal amounts of uh, nine millimeter rounds scattered uh, here and there. 
There's a couple of uh, nice looking automatics, if just a bit dated. Old MP3 uh, S SPKs, I believe what they're called. The, the one with the little silencer attachment at the end. Hmm. The tiny little uh, MP3s. Ooh, MP5K. Yeah, there it is. That's the one. Yeah, MP5K with the, like, the little shoulder strap thing. There's a yeah. there's a two two of those little deadly automatics in the corner with some stuff. Um, Engine Wild, uh, you're searching around and you. Is there anything specific that you're looking for, or is it just in general? I'm just poking around, trying not to touch too much stuff, because you know so, don't oh. want to. Okay. Turn on motherboards. Sorry, I misspoke. M Agent uh, White. Oh. Oh, I'm looking for something that looks dangerous and fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm looking for a new toy. A new toy? Oh, boy. What would you find in here? Um... Oh yeah, give me a. Uh, did you roll? Uh, go ahead. And, yeah, you rolled the search. So you're digging around in the area around where Anemone found the uh, the green box containing the solvents, right? You're like, it's there's like a big thing that says Groversville 1999 or whatever on it. And you're like, oh cool, what's what happening over here? You find a small little metal box. Sorry, metal box. A metal uh sphere. Looks like a little. Like a like a baseball, something the size of it could fit in your hand. It looks odd though. Um, there, it, you think there's it's rusted over. You pick it up, and you're like, "That's not rust. That's dried blood." In different places on it, there's a couple little um, apertures, perhaps that are like closed at the moment. You're not sure what you're looking at, but whatever this metal is, um, it almost feels like it's giving you an allergy. You know how like you, people who have a metal allergy to like nickel or whatever, like their skin gets you know, like irritated rather quickly. That's what you kind of feel the moment you pick it up. It's not hot or anything like that. It's actually kind of cold to the touch, but the, the longer you hold it, the longer it feels like it's like irritating your skin. What do you do with it? Uh is there a sack or something that i can put it in yeah well you can probably like grab something from somewhere else and toss it yeah. into a... yeah that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna grab something from somewhere toss it in there and just it's uh it's uh it's pretty hefty you know you if you it, it's like the size of an eight ball so like if you held it in your hand you hit somebody with it you could probably crack the skull open it's pretty oh yeah nice. pretty sturdy stuff yeah neat uh anybody else uh, I think Walter was eyeing the MP5Ks in the corner and some uh, gathering some ammo. Uh, Winnebago, you ran out to the car, right? Where Cordelia was? Yeah, because they broke the toy that I wanted. So <laughs> You see, Cordelia's like, what the fuck happened in there? I don't know. Flipping light switches and everybody flips out, you know. <laughs> okay. It's like, whatever. <laughs> don't worry. At least Weirdos, you know right? At this joint. Yeah, what can you do? She's like, I'm calling you all a, an Uber. Uh, they're going to take you somewhere else for the meantime. I have to babysit this fucking thing, whatever it is. Have fun with the flamethrower. Yeah, hopefully not. She says as she walks past you. She's looking for the flamethrower now inside the uh, <laughs> inside the storage uh, area. The rest of you get to leave. I uh, think it's under the x-rays. <laughs> Yeah, you see, you're just like, I think it's over there. Um, eventually, the, your ride arrives. It, actually, several ride, uh, Get my rides truck. arrive because there's several of you. Uh, so a couple different cars pull up, and they offer to take you to uh, where Cooper call or Barnabas, rather, called them up for you. Um, you're, they're supposed to be taking you out past the, on the main highway, uh, leading out of Seattle, actually, to the south. Uh, there is a rather uh, large um, country house just off the highway. So they drive you out there. It's quite a it's quite a bit of ways until so eventually uh, they drop you off. And you see when they when they when you pull up, it's still dark out. Uh, so it's you know very late in the evening by the time you arrive there. Um, 
Cooper and Cordelia stayed behind. You still don't know what happened to Agent Warlock, but according to Cooper, he disappeared along with everything that he was carrying at the time for the last six months, uh, which had to, which pertained to your case and several other cases as well. So there's a little bit of a um, question mark there. When you arrive on site, there's several vehicles uh, in front of this house. There's like a long dirt road that leads off from the highway and there's fields all around. And um, it's, it's an old uh, farmhouse and there's like an old uh, barn off to the side. Uh, some uh, derelict farming equipment that's been laying out, like an old tractor that's probably broken or something that has been used in years. Um, there's a couple, there's like a pickup, a couple pickup trucks and four door sedan sitting in the, in the, uh, in the driveway. And there's an old man sitting on a, uh, one of those like, uh, swing, um, sets on the front of the house. Like a porch uh, swing? A porch. Yes. Thank you. Porch swing. So he's sitting on a, a yeah, a porch swing and he, uh, underneath him, there's like a large hound dog just kind of like, you know, face on the on the floor and he's just he's sitting there in a bathrobe and like caught like holding a uh, a break open shotgun middle of the night these uber drivers are like oh no we're not we're not we're not going down there <laughs> so they leave you at the property uh entrance way and they they take off uh, cooper uh messages you all and asks and he's like uh this is um this is Al, he says. That's all he, he leaves it at that. He's like, uh, the person you're going to be staying with at this house is named Al. He's an old agent. Uh, just be respectful. He's an old friend of Barnabas's. He should be able to keep you in place um, until we get some more answers about what's going on. He's like, the quarantine group is heading down to the storage uh, shed. Uh, they're going to check out what's there, contain everything, take it back to a lab, etc. Um they some of them will be swinging by within the next 24 hours or so uh just to check out those of you who came within close contact of this thing don't go anywhere they say they say uh, come up and uh, you you get left to your devices you have no ride back <laughs> uh Cordelia still has the suv back in town but you're here in front of this large two-story um house and uh, the old man is just there smoking a cigarette on the porch, just kind of like looking at you. <laughs> Things will kill you, you know. Yeah. These are my worries, he says. <laughs> to whoever's standing next to Wild, he'll just kind of lean over and go, you know, honestly, I'm kind of surprised to see that someone from Delta Green is still alive at, you know, <laughs> in old age. Mm hmm. Yeah. You've heard about the, uh, the retirement age for average Delta Green agents and. It, it doesn't uh, usually exceed uh, 30 or 40 years old, usually. So, yeah, you're kind of surprised. Like, this old man has been with the organization this long. He's an old cowboy, is what uh, Cooper tells you. He's like, uh, come on in. And he's like, make yourselves at home. I'm waiting on here for you all night. Uh, name's Al. That's Bernie. He points down to the dog. Hey, I hold my appropriated cardboard box to my chest. And look very large eyed and blink a bunch. <laughs> yeah, you're like, he's like, uh, nice to meet you all. You're give, Barnabas's uh, kids, right? Give the dog is, scritches. Should, should we be greeting <laughs> the like, dog as well? I mean, it's Delta Green. You, you never know. Don't be weird. Yeah, uh, don't. We have a fish person. It, it's a dog. What? It's, but. What are you talking what? about? Wait, lady goes straight to the dog and greets the dog. You always greet the dog. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> it kind of like uh, moves away from you. Like as soon as you, your hands get near, it's like kind of moves away. Uh, An enemy is slightly scared of the dog and avoids the dog. That's fortunate. That's good, actually, because the dog like looks at you the whole time. It kind of like as soon as you start coming up the steps, it kind of raises its head at you. And just kind of looks at you. <laughs> you see, um, Albert looks down and like, Bernie, cut it out. <laughs> All right, everybody inside. You hungry? Yeah. How about some breakfast for dinner? 
Hell yeah. Sounds good. Do you have moonshine too? Yeah. Well, yeah, down in the cellar. You want to go check it out? Dope. <laughs> He's like, uh, how's about some scrambled eggs and bacon, some coffee? Down for it. Sounds great. Sounds like great. Jam or butter on your toast? He says. Both. Beg your pardon, but do you have some sea salt? Uh, yeah, I think I got a sack in the pantry over there. He points to, like, walk-in pantry, you know, it's pretty big. You walk in and, like, there's, like, cereal boxes and snacks and, like, condiments and stuff galore. What this have? Much as you need. I'm sorry, so this sir, is how much of this may I have? will be like when I retire. <laughs> when you retire. <laughs> yes, of course. Um, I'm holding the sack in one arm and the box in the other. Okay. okay. Take it and if you need it. Is there a don't. bathtub I can borrow? Upstairs. Thank she's, you very she's much. She's gonna need a, a lot of salt. It That's actually fine. doesn't take that much to make a saline solution, though, so don't worry. <laughs> there's several uh, bathrooms and bedrooms upstairs and downstairs, so it's, it's there's plenty of room to go around. It's like, pick a room, stay in it. I shamelessly picked the one with the largest tub and mixed myself up a saline solution in it. Pick the one with the biggest windows facing the front. All right, cool. And you face out the front and the... Me and the statue are going to go take a bath. Oh, you took the statue. Cool. Yeah, to the bottom of the box with the bottles. (laughs) I'm going to be playing with my new eight ball. Oh, cool. Um, what do you, let me take a look at the skills on the sheet here, because that's going to come. That's going to be fun. What do we have? What are the skills here? This would be... You can roll a natural or science, whichever is higher. Are you talking to me or are you talking to uh oh sorry agent white okay uh okay yeah that's that's a very very low rating and yeah and 97 does not cut it oh no it does not no it does that's not. that's only You're like just 87 like points off like... You think you think there's some places on it that are supposed to uh, read your uh, grasp of it? Like it almost feels like you're supposed to wrap your hands or your fingers around it a certain way. And you're like, I don't know. I guess I'm not doing it right. Like it feel like yeah. You in, intuitively you feel like you haven't figured it out. It's almost like a a round Rubik's cube to you. You know, like there's got to be more to this than just a heavy ball. Like come on. Uh, I'm going to take it to wild later. All right. That's a good idea, actually. Um, Anemone, you get into the bath with this thing. Did you roll power? I did not roll power. Let me see. Is it standard dice? Yeah, standard uh, power roll. Want to roll on or below? Okay. And I rolled a 30, which is well below my power. Okay, you you touch it, you bring it into the water, and at first, like you know, you grab a hold of it, and you're kind of transfixed by it, like, oh yeah, this is something like you feel like it's a missing piece of your uh, your past, you know, like one more mm-hmm. uh, piece to that to that puzzle. And, and but as soon as you bring it into the water with you, something happens, and you almost feel like you're thrown back in your own mind, and but you part of you like resists it and you just like <gasps> and you kind of like snap out of it it's almost like you had like a waking vision or something the moment like it touched the water and it, like you, you had to like not you instinctively let it go and it like sinks to the bottom of the bathtub hmm. i think the next step she would take and this would be more a gesture of hope than anything else would be to submerge herself at the same time as it, maybe it just sitting around where her feet is underwater, and then she would try to remember the prayers from her childhood, humming them softly under the surface of the water at a very low pitch. 
<laughs> okay. Not that she's trying to summon anything. She's no. just trying to remember her um, lost bits of her culture. Yeah. Granted that the, Some... I assume it's the fish person equivalent of Jesus loves me. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you you uh you start to like hum it, uh, you hum this this tune to yourself, and you start to remember. You have a vague memory of the song, and of the the beachside at night, uh, when you start humming it. Like it's more clear to you now than it's ever been before, and you're like, oh, maybe this thing is can help me remember, like better than Nancy or anybody else can. You know, you start you you kind of like. You clutch it close to you and you, you uh, hold it and you just kind of like hum the song uh, as you're like uh, immersed in the salt bath. Uh, yes. And finally getting a good gill flush. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Feel much better now for that. Uh, Agent Walter, anything you want to do while you're at the house? I just, he's just going to shoot the shit with Al. Excellent. He calls everybody down to for dinner at some point. While, but while he while he's cooking it, though, you like sit at the kitchen table, or whatever. Or what do you ask him? Just drinking coffee. Just ask him about what he, what he does now. Too much, he says. <laughs> it's like breaking up the eggs in the skillet. How long you been with him? Too long. <laughs> Good answer, he says. <laughs> You got family? Oh, yep. You're a brave soul, he says. Somebody's got to do it. You're right. 100%. Everybody, somebody has to do the dirty work. Might as well be Somebody's got to keep these guys in line. <laughs> oh, are you the senior among them? Maybe. I actually don't know. <laughs> Should ask. You might know something you don't. Hmm. It's like, is this everybody? I was told there was uh, one more. Yeah, I haven't seen him. He, he disappeared. He does that sometimes. No one really that's knows where good. he goes. Yeah, that's uh, that might be a problem. That is a problem. Well, I, I mean, <laughs> I, I figure that the higher-ups know what he's doing. I... Do they? They barely know what we're doing. <laughs> What are you kids uh, out to up to display for, or is that a classified? He says. I mean, do you really want to know? Are we allowed to tell to him? You're in my house. <laughs> Killer bacon. I look at I look at wild. Shit. Whole thing. <laughs> well, this is like I ain't say shit. <laughs> I. I don't know if I'm allowed to say anything, so I... Yeah, the, the greys are up to shit, I think. <laughs> the greys? Jesus Christ. They're still around? Supposedly. I huh. don't know. It, it seems like they're MO. Yeah, they're, they're floating around somewhere. <laughs> uh, I thought all that shit went out of, uh, out of fashion with Majestic. <laughs> Guess I was wrong. Didn't Majestic just rebrand to the program? Uh, what, That's exactly what happened. What's majestic? Uh, Long story. Government conspiracy to investigate paranormal shit. Uh, but they made a deal with the paranormal shit. Now nah, they're just fucking Many with you. It was deals. a great movie. <laughs> yeah, where's, what's your take on all this, uh, Winnebago? Um, I'm assuming you're there uh, waiting for dinner. He is... He actually went downstairs and got a couple of jars of moonshine, not to drink, but to use his weapons later. Um, oh, Jesus. Because <laughs> okay. apparently we're going to need right. lots of fire. Um, lots of fire, yeah. Uh, Winnebago actually writes himself a note that's just, hey, and puts it in his pocket. Okay. <laughs> What's you put? What do you write on the note? Just hey. What's up? Hey. <laughs> okay. Put it in your pocket. You'll find the the other. You will find it later. All right. Come up with a couple jars of moonshine. It smells pretty good. It smells pretty potent. Cool. And he's like, "Hey, you're just in time. Whipped up some eggs here. Let's you know put in some stuff. 
uh, on, the, on the table. What are you, you're hungry? Come and get it. That's not the killer gray bacon, is it? <laughs> it's like, I got crispy and I got chewy. Which one do you want? Both. A good, excellent answer. He says he gives you a nice helping of bacon on your plate. Here you go, pal. We'll all go to the same funeral together. Are these, are these, uh, Did, did did he mean that gray gray bacon? The what bacon? I'm sorry. <laughs> what if they was just over there eating every piece of bacon, just looking at him? <laughs> Listen, the stuff will kill you anyway. <laughs> just looking at wild, wild, just like mm. wild at this point. For some reason, finding out <laughs> that that uh, anemone is a fish person has made him question everything. <laughs> <laughs> so like does the dog have sentience is the bacon made out of grays who knows <laughs> wow <laughs> oh, yeah you're, you're all starting to realize like oh gosh like yeah stuff is really really weird <laughs> more so than we ever thought um al just sort of uh leans back in his chair he lets you all right he gives up his chair for everybody to fit comfortably around the dinner table and he just stands up and he smokes a cigarette while he has his coffee burning, you know, saunters in from outside and plops down on the floor somewhere in the corner. And he kind of walks out a little, you know, uh, bowl, sets some stuff down, some food for him. Whatever leftovers are left. And he's like, hey, whatever, whatever you don't eat, just give it to Bernie over there. He points to his dog. Isn't and he's like, that, so you're that, here that, on business. My understanding is, you know, you can't uh, talk about it. and That's fine. I just want to know some details because, you know, you're in my house and everything. Don't everybody jump up at once, he says <laughs> jokingly. An enemy has at some point emerged wearing um, fresh clothing, the statue having been stashed in her backpack, well hidden in layers of miscellaneous stuff, and has acquired a couple of eggs over easy and the chewiest possible bacon. It just occurred to me, I'm probably still in my pajamas. I'm from New England. White lady. Nice town, Jesus. <laughs> oh, I've heard. White lady sees the jars of moonshine, grabs one, opens it, takes some, pours some out, starts cleaning off the metal orb with it. <laughs> it works. Uh, whatever stains were on it, man, that shit is like uh, engine grease or something. It just like poosh, disappears. Uh, so it's nice. Usually, it's a nice little shiny metal ball now. Usually, I You're work in food them. service. Um, it's seasonal at the Golden Lobster. But it's year round at the diving bell, and I think that one's my favorite. But don't tell my boss that the golden lobster. You still work? You do like a side hustle? <laughs> wow. Well, right now I'm doing this job because they said they'd give me some paperwork. <laughs> paperwork? He goes like this, more like a, more like that kind of paperwork. No, a birth certificate and proof of my American citizenship. Congratulations, he says. Welcome to the most fucked up place in the world. He's like, uh, all right, well, now that I've just had my uh, third cup waiting for you all, I'm going to go and lay down for a bit, <laughs> see if I can blink myself to sleep. Um, Good night, sir. Fresh wherever you like. Things like uh, breakfast is uh, first thing in the morning tomorrow. Probably leftovers, if you don't mind. Oh, I was, I was going to ask if we were going to have dinner for breakfast, you know, just to shake things up a bit. Oh, you're, you're here less than three hours and you're already uh, on to the, uh, you're already on point, sir. He says, uh, that's exactly what we're going to do. You like clam chowder? Ooh. <laughs> yeah. All right, stick around. I got a, I got a good one for you. It's like, y'all have a good night. He saunters upstairs into his room, plunk, closes the door. Bernie like stay, stays out because he knows there's food and he waits for the any remainders to come to his plate before eating it and then sauntering back upstairs to, to well, kind of scratch at his door and be let in. <laughs> I, 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 I took I, extra to give to the dog. Yeah, it dumps it oh, eggs, some kind of bacon next. every once in a while on the floor. Just For the first time in a very long time, you're in a place together and it is dead quiet. There's not a peep anywhere in the house. All you hear is occasional creaking of wood as uh, the evening winds down and starts to get cold outside. I show off my new ball and say, anybody anything to make of this? 
<laughs> I'm gonna make an unnatural check on his thing just for his sake. It's, it's do. an eight ball. Yeah, check my unnatural ball. One of those uh no, no, 11, not, which not, is not magic. well within my unnatural oh. score. Okay. Um, it's worth a guess. Yeah, you in instinctively know that what he has is a weapon, but it's not the, a traditional type of weapon that involves hitting somebody with it, like physically. And you're just like, where's the release on this? Like, you, you take it into your own hands and start fiddling with it? I do not pick it up with my actual skin. Um, mm -hmm. I would use a napkin to touch it as a barrier method and do um and be poking it with a clean butter knife oh but... excellent yeah you find that there's some areas on it that on the surface of this ball that are, are sort of there for you to make contact like there there are contacts on it uh your hands have to fit around it a certain way and you're like figuring it out like oh yeah you just put your hands like this and like you just don't like tr try to make the uh the right gesture uh, to get the whole thing. Um, How many eventually, fingers? Um, it's kind of hard to say. Uh, you Maybe like three, but like they're, they're spaced apart in a weird way. So you have to kind of like, you know, yeah. put your fingers together and then do the thing. Uh, you do that. And suddenly the little apertures open and these little things come out. These almost like proboscis come out and goes... And they stick into your arm. They sink into your arm. But well below the epidermis. Causing some method of pain initially. And you're like, oh! And when you open, your, when you raise your arm like this, you feel like there's a static in the air. And suddenly there's a discharge. And the bowl at the center of the dinner table explodes into a couple hundred pieces and scatters everywhere around you. Oh Roll no, oh no, please. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I take back my ball. Ooh, I yeah, like it. Yeah, so you grab a hold of it and you see the uh, anemones is now bleeding uh, somewhat from the little uh, leads that have buried themselves into her forearm. You wanna grab it and pull on it? Oh, uh, they're buried in. Uh, <laughs> let's yeah. go. Anemone would probably be gently tugging at them to see if she could remove them. I, I am just mm. telling her, let go. So, uh, where'd you get the ball from? Storage. Let go. Wait, this guy pulls something from and storage. I'm telling and Anemone to let tackled? go and see if removing the fingers removes the. <laughs> You also feel a bit drained suddenly, uh, Anemone. Like you just like what? Like you just you've had your head feels, pardon the pun, swimming. <laughs> you know, like you're just like whoa. Does removing the fingers from the position? Yeah, she's going to have released her hand on it because she has leads attached to her, and is attempting mm -hmm. to get it off her. But about as far as seeing how much pull there is on this. So there's one thing like that, and you got to see a full um, sign of her talons sticking out as she's mm. trying to get it off. Excellent. Yeah, you let go as best as you can. Just like, ah, 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 eventually, like, yeah, you see the, the leads, like, like, just slide back into place. The aperture closes, a little metal, and the, the ball just drops, clunk, rolls. And you're left with like three or four uh, incisions <clears throat> on your arm uh, that are sore. First aid Ooh. time. <laughs> you can roll. Go ahead and roll, Sandy. When you get a chance, it's just you. If you succeed, you lose zero. If you fail, you lose one. I'm thinking I'm probably going to lose some sanity there. Uh, let me see. I got a fifty. My sanity is. I am below um, sanity, so that's fine. Oh, okay. Excellent. So you don't lose anything. We're just at it. It's like, oh, that was mildly unpleasant. Like, what the hell was that? <laughs> um, like, you know, this is some sort of a weapon and stuff. And actually, when you look at it, you, you're you like, yeah, that's that's my go technology. You don't remember exactly how you know that, but some part of I you knows. I explained that helpful factoid. 
And I suggest mm-hmm. if he's going to test it, to do so outside and away from everybody else. Sorry, she tested outside and away from everybody else. Because at this point, the difficulty with it would be aiming it. And I try to remember mm-hmm. if I was focusing on the bowl at the time when it happened. Like, did it have an interesting pattern and it was distracting me? Or did I just have a random charge and it was the first thing I hit? Yeah, it's kind of hard to, to tell exactly, but uh, hold on a second, uh, Devin. I'm sending you the information for this. Right. I believe this is what it is. Okay. Did anyone else right. take shit they weren't supposed to from the, the box? <laughs> Everybody looks at Anemone. <laughs> I, I didn't. Okay, Anemone's never raising nothing. her hands. That means yes. For a moment, there's a creaking door upstairs. What the hell was that? Insatiable curiosity for things man was not meant to know. You're going to need to expense the fruit bowl. <laughs> Keep it's that shit so out of the house. Good. Send thing. it back to the internet. He sets, shuts the door. It's a good what? thing you're not a man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. The internet. <laughs> Is it Tron? Are we getting all that weird shit out in the internet? I don't know. I just know I finally have a cool enough toy to fit the leading lady that I am. He, you, all that happens, and you're still like, "Oh yeah, you're coming with me." <laughs> you grab it, go back upstairs. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> uh, now you know how to activate it, so to speak. So there you go. I'm gonna um, go eat some fish oil pills and. Go hole up wrapped <laughs> in a blanket and think hard about my life choices. Excellent. Uh, everybody here can uh, gain back, can gain about, if you haven't already gained any, uh, I don't think you've gained any uh, unnatural as of yet, uh, but go ahead and give yourselves uh, 5% of unnatural. Uh, you could do the same, Panda, because there, uh, there's a... Uh, quite a bit that you've learned over the last uh, Woo! six months. 55 and, and unnatural. Kind of your eyes. Yeah. So, exceptional. And, it's uh, rewarding see... to lick glowing rocks. <laughs> yeah, which also means, of course, that your sandy maximum is lowered by that much as well. You know, it's a give and take. What could um, go wrong with a lesser deep one losing her sanity? Oh. Besides, yeah. now I have some puncture wounds in me. And a very, very good reason to go bleed on a statue. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, with that, uh, do any of you do anything else for the rest of the evening, or you turn in for the night? Probably turn in. All right. I imagine all the things that can blow up. <laughs> I have yeah, nightmares like, of I things that climbing into you- my gills. You have dreams about like setting, like taking that thing, the uh, alien tasers to the proto matter being's face. It's like, yeah, take that shit. <laughs> setting them on fire. Um, Random. Agent Wild, did you want to do night. anything while uh, you were still up or, or no? Uh, yeah, he's going to read a bit on the Grays and the Migo. Migo? Migo? Migo, yes. Uh, yeah, Migo, Migo, whatever. It's from your north, from the south, whatever. Um, you peruse the. Um, Albert's library. Uh, he has a lot of stuff. Uh, and cats. Some of it is highlighted, you notice, when you take out books about UFOs or whatever. Some of it is highlighted, and you feel like those are the parts, as you read further, that, like, he actually confirmed. Like, it's not. there's not a whole lot of highlighting, uh, depending on which book you look at. But, yeah, you see, like, the, there's books there on Roswell and all sorts of other weird conspiracy stuff and... Uh, some of it he does seem to highlight and he writes like little footnotes uh, at the end of the chapters or whatever. Like, oh yeah, this is bullshit, blah, blah, blah. Uh, they had a half right here. Da, da, da. Like he just notates the shit out of all the, all the different books in his library. Um, anything specific that you wanted to learn about the Greys uh, when you were looking through this stuff or no? Uh, just, just generic. <clears throat> um, just enough to educate him on where he was lacking before. Oh, okay. Yeah, you peruse all that stuff, and it basically supplements everything that you've heard so far. There's only one book out of the bunch, though, that seemed to posit that the, the Greys are just a, a part of another facade or something like that, that there's a greater intelligence behind what they are. 
it seems to be the only one after you look, go through like several books of the stuff that even hints or suggests something like that. It's not the popular opinion, but it is the one that he highlights. Uh, so there is some truth to what you were told recently that uh, the greys themselves are sort of like puppets to the puppet master. And with that, you all sleep wonderfully well. Not really, but you do sleep. Uh, Agent Winnipego, mm. roll. A give me a power roll, please. Ooh. Succeed. Success. Yes. All right. Uh, so interesting stuff happens. Like you're thinking about like your day today, and like, no, I pushed the button. It didn't push the button for me. I pushed the button. Still on that. And like, <laughs> <laughs> you're you're you uh, you having some you're having some like weird dream. Uh, you think where you wake up and you're not in Owl's house. You're not in your own house. You're. You're on a boat, it seems. And you're like, oh, this is nice. But then when you look around, you realize that you're on a boat in the middle of a street in a major city. Is it being It's towed? not Milan. Oh, sorry. It's not Venice. Oh, okay. It's like a, yeah, it's like a, uh, it's a boat with a motor. You know what I mean? Uh, right. You're there by yourself. Okay. Um, and you're looking, you've got a backpack on and you're looking around and it's like pitch, uh, it's getting dark outside. You're looking around at the buildings around you and you you kind of feel like this is a New England city like uh, Boston or New York or something like that, uh, judging by the architecture. But you're not exactly sure why you're there. And there seems to be like flowers or something everywhere. Like at first you think like, oh, it's snowing, you know, but you don't feel cold. And you're looking around and like, no, that's those aren't flowers or anything. and when you look at the water it's like littered everywhere it's covered in this stuff and it, it almost look the closer you look at it you think like maybe it's like uh dust or something like that when it's you wipe it though it's, it's ash or spicy oh. oh the fuck when you uh, when you look at the reflection in the water in particular as some of it like moves as the 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 boat is leaving wakes in the middle of the street this old abandoned street you see your reflection and you realize you're not you anymore. Like you realize that you are who you are. You remember who you are, but you're in somebody else's body. Hmm. You look down, you're like, you don't have an ID on you or anything like that. But you do see that symbol tattooed on your wrist. The same symbol that Agent Warlock had inscribed on the back of all those mirrors back in uh, Berkeley. And uh, you're not sure how you got here, but when you, you kind of have the intuition uh, initially, when you when you look around, you realize everything how it is in the state that it's in around you, this completely desolate city, and just you on this boat. That this is the future. This is what's awaiting all of you. And with that, we're going to go to break. Oh. We'll be back in ten minutes. Uh, come back at uh. 9.42 Eastern Standard Time. Smoke them if you got them.
cell made it to a contact no known simply as Al. He lives a, a, in a large two-story farmhouse in the uh, outskirts of the city and uh, outside of uh, Spokane. And uh, they had some uh, breakfast for dinner and had some weird dreams and they mishandled some alien technology and blew shit up. So, you know, it's a Tuesday for Delta Green. Uh, <laughs> but we're back and I wanted to ask Agent Winnebago if there were any specific details that he was uh, on the lookout for in this weird dreamlike uh, state that he found himself in after going to bed. Uh, are there any large looming creatures off in the distance sort of in a haze that like fade in and out of a fog or something like that? It is definitely a foggy uh, landscape. Uh, mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to see uh, even broad daylight. Um, the sky is sort of constantly occluded like the, the sunlight uh, it's oh it's like oh it's always overcast okay and um, you know dark clouds misty air you, know, you can maybe see like 10 15 feet ahead of you and then the fog hits cool second and, yeah question. you could swear that there's shit moving out there somewhere okay cool. in fact you know it there is all right second question what type of boat is this uh it's just like a standard you know uh what's the word i'm looking for it's a fishing boat you know like an engine and move it around. Uh, it's not like a fancy boat. It's one that can fit uh, comfortably inside of, like a wide causeway in a major city. Uh, okay. Park cars like under underwater on the side of the road, floating okay. around. I'm they, still one more maneuverable than the, the big ones that you have, like the big you know shield in the front. I'm still one to believe in you can control your own dreams. So I'm gonna do like some sick like turns with the boat. And just like drive mm -hmm. up one street and just like, you know, cut the wheel, cut the engine and slide. Oh, you're going fast. That's cool. Yeah. Um, one second. <laughs> yeah. So you, you're the, some of these. Uh, there's a lot of stuff, detritus and general trash that is just floating out in the water. You're okay. pumping into it, but you're doing so at a slow, steady pace. You're not leaving a huge wake or anything. Uh, you're getting somewhere. You don't remember exactly where you were going, but you'd know that you were uh, with purpose going down this major causeway, Washington Street, something like that. Okay. Uh, a lot of cars on the side of the road underwater. Uh, some of them are just like floating around slowly, like hulks uh, floating dead in space. And like you just kind of zip around them. You, you cut the engine on, you're, just, and you're zooming through it, leaving these huge wakes uh, behind you. Uh, you see the water actually goes up some of the stoops up to like the door level. So like the water seeping into like the nearby brownstones and such. Okay. Uh, eventually you kind of zip around the corner and turn, uh, turn around there and you hit something. <clears throat> you keep going? Uh, no, I stop and look and see what I hit. Also, it you, didn't mess up the you motor. You slow it down and you look down and stuff. You look behind you and something hit the front of the boat. And when you sped up, something got caught in the motor in the back. There was like a... <laughs> And then like bubbles and you look behind you and you think maybe there's like trash or something like that and behind you that left that you left behind that you just that got caught underneath the boat when you went really fast mm -hmm. uh, but then you realize that whatever the that thin layer of white that permeates everything uh, that ash starts to turn like a reddish black color mm -hmm. and you realize that whatever you just hit is bleeding out onto the surface of the water right now. And I hope this isn't Florida and I hit a fucking manatee. <laughs> no, too much. No, there, there's the, the place around here is too old to be Florida, you suspect. Hey, man, the oldest city in the world is in Florida. But, uh, okay. Not, not this one. Um, cool. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's probably a bad thing. Uh, just gun it if it will gun still. Oh, very good. Um, I just read the messages. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Cool, you gun the engine. It doesn't work. You're like, come on, come on. I know you're in there. You hear a voice inside of your head. It's vaguely familiar. You think it might correspond with some guy named Warlock? You're not sure, but he's like, fucking engine screwed up. You went fast again. You shouldn't have done that. That was foolish motorboat now they're gonna come for you he says out loud <laughs> okay um 
Did you learn nothing from Seattle? No. What do you do? Uh, is it possible to like push the boat to one of the brownstones? Uh, yeah, you can. I mean, yeah, you can gra probably grab like a piece of debris nearby and like push it out. <laughs> you know, okay, steadily, slowly along, paddle your way over there. Want to push um, it over to one of the brownstones and like hop out onto the door stoop and try to knock in the door. The door still cool. is there. Roll alertness, please. Success. What'd you get? Success. Oh, good. Okay. Um, so yeah, you're like paddling along and you, you notice that something just kind of crested the water behind you mm -hmm. and like duck like dip down underneath the, the boat and you hear like a bumping sound like a donk 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 and like you start seeing like more ripples around the water as you're realizing that you're not alone down here and you're maybe about 20 25 feet away from the brownstone uh ledge um is there anything in the, the boat, boat rocks a little bit and you hear like something clambering up the side of the boat behind you do in I, the water. Do I have anything like on me? Anything in the boat? An oar? Uh, yeah, you you know that you have like a sword like uh, attached sword. to the side of your backpack. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I whip out that sword and like face whatever's jumping up into the boat. It looks like it's an old English like long sword, okay. but it feels hot to the touch. And you remember this is the one that always burns uh Whenever you touch it, it's always warm. And it always takes something from you before it does what it does best, which is to burn things. Cool. You grab it and you pull it out and you go to face this thing and uh, the boat seems to rock uh, simultaneously as multiple hands reach out of the water and grab onto it and start pulling the, these forms up onto the boat themselves. Another voice inside of your head goes off immediately upon seeing these things. You recognize what they are. And so does she. What does an enemy see when she sees her brethren clambering up into the boat, ready to eat the one that's uh, trespassing into the wa their waters? I'm here now. Where am I in position? Uh, in his head. Um, I give him the correct thing to shout in fish person. I didn't mean it. I'm sorry. <laughs> he shouts that immediately. <laughs> <laughs> roll percentile. Just percentile at all? Yeah, just roll percentile. I'll let you know if you succeed. Uh, eight. You rolled an eight? Yes. You see, like, they seem confused for a moment, and they kind of like, they look at each other, and they, like, they seem to be speaking in a, a different tongue other than you, uh, using clicks and words and stuff like that. You see, like, uh, one of them points to like the pieces of the one that you left behind you out in the street, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and they start I will pay moving, the life like, moving price. closer. <laughs> <laughs> like you have multiple voices inside of your head going off at once. White lady uh, says something to the effect of, "Go ahead, Devin." <laughs> Uh, Warlock says something to the effect of, you blew it now. Uh, what does White Lady say uh, once she is witness to these things about to eat their uh, friend in the future? Well, knew they were going to die. <laughs> what does Agent Walter say when he realizes well, that you gotta switch to a you're all in here field. together? And just remember, casting techniques I taught you. <laughs> <laughs> this is a dream. I don't care. <laughs> it's a dream. It's totally a dream. He, you uh, see, they look at each other confused when you say that. You have about a, a split second before that they, they rush you and try to tear you to pieces with their with their claws. What do you do? Uh, he immediately just stabs the closest one in the face. No. Roll percentile. <laughs> Uh, that's with melee weapons? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's... Not using your skills. Yeah, you're not using the skills on your sheet. Oh, I'm not. Okay. Uh, then... Different person now. 
different person now. Okay. You monster! Uh, 32? Yeah, that'll do it. Okay. You plunge the sword right into this thing, and you see that the thing gurgles, and um, you know instinctively what to do here. You lose a piece of yourself for the moment, and you see when uh, the blade goes into the deep one, uh, it burns, the blade burns hot, and then suddenly the thing bursts in flames and explodes. Nice. Can the deep have... one next to it Can he gets have... like, thrown off. A, a fishing rod with just like the line sw swirling around over his head in his other hand. Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, the the that tattoo that you have on your wrist starts to tingle, mm -hmm. and you see uh, instinctively the deep one that reaches out and grabs a hold of you, like ah, has to let go because it seems to like ward him off or burn him at, at the moment it, it touches your skin and there. It seems to like keep them away from you at least for a little bit. Uh, the one explodes and the one of them falls into the into the water as another one's clambering over the side and goes to reach up to rape you, uh, and manages to tear a chunk out of your leg for a moment, just like behind you, just rakes you down the side and you're like, ah oh, shit. He turns uh, around and tries to, to stab safety. that one and says, "Give that piece back, you bitch." <laughs> Give me that back. Uh, roll power again. This time using your sheet. Uh, power. No. Mm -hmm. Mm, success 30 success you you're, you're like give that shit back and like you're, you're going to war with these things and just then you feel like everything around you kind of like stop for a moment and uh and shimmer and then you, you suddenly like back in your body in the an owl's house when you're okay. sweating profusely and you realize that wasn't a nightmare that was real and you still feel like, for you know, it's like that moment when you have like a really bad dream and you wake up and you still feel like almost like phantom limb uh, in, in certain extremities. Uh, in this particular case, you feel it in your leg and you go to look like you feel like maybe you actually did sustain some sort of damage there. You certainly feel like you did, but it, it's there for a moment and then it fades. Hmm. Roll sanity. Good cat time. Thanks, Nunchuck. Do we have any memories of this? The 20? No. Okay. You rolled a 20? You successfully rolled... Yeah, uh... it, success it succeeds. Oh! Excellent. You lose one only. One only. Thanks, Duncha. Yeah. That was all you, bud. <laughs> that was all you, buddy. Excellent. So you had a great night's sleep, obviously. Um, what After that, do you, like, have a cup of coffee? Do you try to settle back into sleep? What do you want to do here? He, uh, I'm sure is, um, uh, he, uh, probably is just like soaked through his, um, his pajama top. So he'll toss that aside. Um, mm -hmm. like pure dad bod underneath. Uh, <laughs> what time is it? It's like two in the morning. Oh, it's two in the morning. Holy shit. No, going back to sleep. Fuck that noise. Cool dream. Okay. <laughs> it's just a dream. It's just a dream. Try to pass out. The next morning, you uh, you all awaken uh, to the smell of uh, microwave clam chowder. <laughs> oh. Not as good as the original, but Albert calls you downstairs for breakfast, as it were. I and if no you want problem. biscuits, I made some too. Okay, uh, not too bad. Those oh, pairs good, I think. But the uh, it's the special ones, you know, the the lobster one. What's it called? Oh, the cheese the lobster. Trash. The Red cheese. lobster biscuits. There the cheese go. biscuits? Oh, so he takes the cheese biscuits and puts like four on his plate and then like uses the clam chowder as like sausage gravy and just eats it like that. <laughs> He's oh, like, that's an interesting good. idea. I'll have to try that sometime. Out of my uh, character, that was what I thought of was <laughs> using it. <laughs> I take as much chowder as I can politely take. He, he's very generous with it. He has a huge thing of it uh, that's in the fridge uh, that he's just kind of doling out. Uh, he's got, he has it like style. back on the yes, uh, he has it back on the stove and it's he's reheating it there. Uh, whatever doesn't get reheated enough, he stick it in and nuke it and take it back out. Uh, Bernie is eagerly a... awaiting leftovers as usual. He's just kind of looking up at all of you like from the corner, like eyebrows, you know, mm -hmm. raising. Um, Albert's like, hope everybody uh, had a good eat night's uh, sleep. Got a message this morning, a buzz from Barnabas. 
sending the quarantine team over here to take a look. Uh, some of you, I think they came into contact with redacted, whatever that thing was. I don't know. Nobody will tell me. Uh, they're gonna I have to take a. Hurt. Yeah, it's like they're gonna have a take a gander at each one of you, uh, just, to, just to be fair, you know. It'll, it'll probably take a couple hours. This is not the first time this has happened. And like, it's just for your yeah. safety. It's nothing, you know, out of this world. No pun intended. Uh, so why are they willing this. to put you in danger by housing us in the same location? He's like, uh, did I mention I don't sleep anymore? Uh, never mind. Uh, uh, not what? Huh? I'm not sure what that has to do with possibly contaminating you, but... Don't worry about it. I, I'm I'm worrying. <laughs> you look like a warrior, he says. <laughs> you see, eventually there's like a uh, a honking outside. Not that. He looks outside. Bernie gets up and starts kind of you know plopping around. <laughs> he goes like, hey, "Easy, easy, easy. We got more guests. This is the busiest this place has been in months." <laughs> oh shit! Opens the door and looks. Yeah, I think your friends are here. Not the quarantine team, though. Those others, those other two, the suits. He says. Out come Cordelia and Cooper. Buenos dias, he says. Upon walking inside, everybody okay? Looks around. I'll take that as a positive. Uh, quarantine team. Would you like some should chowder? It's really good. Uh, no thanks. I'm allergic to things that are disgusting. Also, uh, the quarantine team should be coming in later today. Uh, no hard time on that. They have to pull them from different places, so they're having to have hazard to get down here to run some tests on everybody. Um, this has actual cod in it. I haven't had cod in several years, I think. Oh, I think I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. You see, Cooper says, uh, Cordelia's like, I am down to chow down. She says, and she sits at the table and she's like, give me some. Uh, he's, they apparently seem to know Albert. Albert is apparently in, well, one of the old guard in uh, Delta Green. He kind of comes by and serves everybody a little bit of this, a little bit of that, have some biscuits, would you like some coffee, and so on. Uh, is there anything anybody brings up at the uh, breakfast table in the morning? Yeah. Cooper, you don't fish? No, man, that's disgusting. I'm sorry. No offense, she says to the to an enemy. It's just like a personal preference thing. It's so boring unless you. Wait, use why offense to her? Not the one that brought his fishing boat. Whoa! <laughs> because only one of us has a diet that requires a certain quantity of omega um, three, or they experience joint lockup. But I do it in my free time, but I don't have to. Oh yeah. Remember Omega Threes? You see, the old, old guy says what? goes back to sipping his coffee. The old guy remembers Omega Threes. <laughs> uh, see, Cooper is just like uh, Barnabas uh, isn't going to be coming down, but he is expecting a, a briefing of some sort. I uh, figured we'd wait until the quarantine team comes up, does their thing. We'll let them know what happened and how we're right. plan how we're, as a team we're going to proceed forward. Got a lot on our plate, obviously. Albert, I don't know if you're cleared for any of this stuff. He just shakes his head. Well, uh, regardless, you're probably going to get an earful because we have to go over some things here and this place isn't exactly a secure facility. And Albert takes a little bit of umbrage to this. He's like, bullshit! Well, fucking shit, this place is secure 100% all the time. If you want, he's like, you want me to, I'll go, I could go down into that cellar, which is armored, by the way. And it's like, I can go down into that cellar anytime. Nobody knows what's going in, what's going on down there, anywhere else in the house, and vice versa. Completely soundproof. So if you want to have a secure uh, powwow or what have you, you can go down there and do it. That's fine. Also, my upstairs room is secure in that way, too. Well, good to know, he says. I uh, say to Wild. Sorry. Go ahead. I say to Wild reassuringly, everyone keeps saying no offense when they act repulsed by fish, but honestly, that's for the best because that means they probably won't eat me. I think they might also not eat you on account of the fact that you're talking to them. That's never stopped anyone before. That's a terrifying thought. <laughs> See, here's the trick. Fish is brain food. None of them want it. <laughs> Nothing wants to be eaten. 
With the exception see, of Cooper's just like. Uh, uh, you see Cordelia is like this is excellent chowder Al as always thank you oh my pleasure uh, now you uh, girls and boys want to have their little meeting down there that's fine uh, I won't pry I can, I'll just go right back upstairs to my uh, bedroom and leave you all alone down here and he's like it's your house you do whatever you want he's like, well if you don't mind I want to and he points to like the TV in the living room he's like, I just want to sit down and you know catch a catch a thing Sure, go right ahead. We'll make it down to the basement. You still got the good stuff down there? Oh, yeah, you know it. Good. Cooper, go, Cooper and Cordelia are the first ones down. They flip on the lights. It's a it's a cellar cellar. Like, it's, you know, lots of different um, alcoholic beverages down here, old wines, uh, moonshine, as Winnebago found earlier, lots of different uh, knickknacks down here. So uh, you go down there and you see, like, it's, it definitely is soundproof. That much is for certain. Uh, as soon as you close the door to the uh, that leads into the into the basement, it is fucking quiet as shit. You can hear a pin drop down here. Am I still getting my special wetsuit? If you're gonna make me go down in the hole, I mean, you want to go swim back in that damn pond or whatever the hell that was back there? And uh, oh, we're going in the hole. We were- we're going to investigate the underground tunnels because they're clearly collected, connected to the water table. The fact that it's only confined to the area and has not affected the people in Lake Apollo itself, it's something that we should probably be concerned about because there's something anchoring it to that area. Cordelia's like, she's right. We need to take pictures. If we need, if we need to involve the EPA to some extent, shut down the park, whatever we got to do, we should probably do that. Wait, and Cooper's I'm like, yeah, this. that's all great and good and everything, but what about the but, fucking helicopters? I thought we handled this with the vacuum cleaner. About? <laughs> oh, oh no! It it goes much deeper than that. What? Oh, Maybe you need fun to update. contact Ayeta if it's helicopters. Yeah, <laughs> you see, Cordelia's like, oh yeah, fun update on my evening last night, uh, from which I had zero sleep. She says, very uh, eerie, uh, bleary eyed. Uh, Should have had the sick dreams. That thing I had. did, in fact, try to crawl out of that fucking wet back, and I did, in fact, have to set fire on it and hear its cries well into the evening. You're welcome. She says. Mm. That's what I get for using regular outlets. Should just liquid nitrogen that bitch and be done with it. I said we should get some liquid nitrogen as part of our equipment. We also have the spray, which is apparently toxic to regular people, but will cause a blooming purple stain temporarily on life forms that are made of that particular substance. So Great. there seems to be enough bottles for everyone, but I wanted to check to make sure those were actually the most efficient long range sprayers as mm-hmm. um, were these like, um, like clearly they picked them up as quick, grab a bunch of plant misters or were these actually like maximum distance spray? Uh, no, this is like very up close. This is like the type, kind of stuff they use to water your plants or whatever. It doesn't have a long spray uh, reach. It's just uh, a little spritzer. <laughs> It's a spritzer bottle. Yeah, the bottle, problem with the plant misters is they're not very subtle. It would, if you're going to be using something with that small of a spray range, you're going to want a little plastic atomizer of the kind that you can just fit into your hand because then, um, right, it's a lot harder to disarm you too. I just want to go and get like a uh, spray or a spray gun. Yeah, yes, you, you can put could it in a theoretically Nerf bottle. go after yeah. them with a super <laughs> soaker. Yeah, I just want sure. a super soaker, the backpack one. Wait, 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 who are we soaking? You see uh, Cooper uh, speak stuff. It's like, oh, let's like, get ahead of ourselves here. Are we investigating the park and making a case to shut it down uh, to investigate further? Or are we taking what we got right now and running with it? Pointing to like the, you know, the solution, the solvent. Well, I was discussing deployment for it. We should probably go back to the park and investigate it further unless you have a more equipped and thorough team who can tear the entire place apart down to the water table. Well, we have a, a quarantine team coming down, but that's not exactly their uh, expertise. You see, he kind of yes. says, Yes. So if we're going to be going back there, then we'll need the spray bottles because we're dealing with mimics. Now, this stuff right. is supposed to be toxic onto the flesh of people. So I'm guessing it's probably extremely carcinogenic. Mm, possibly, yeah. I didn't get the whole breakdown, Cooper says, but it's like toxic I mean, is toxic. Don't fuck with it. If you- 
it can help it. Well, there's different kinds of toxic. Handle it carefully. There's, it burns and leaves marks. Mm -hmm. It's, it causes birth defects. These things are very important for keeping track because for example, mm -hmm. if you spray some on Lindsay Grimes and it gives her an acid burn, we're in a very different relationship than you spray something on Lindsay Grimes and her children are born with three heads 20 years from now. <laughs> I mean, right. that latter outcome from an agency perspective is not our problem unless she successfully sues. <laughs> and she have a very hard um, time proving causality as well as us knowing that since we're all yeah, good luck identities. for uh, good luck to her suing the conspiracy she's the uh cordelia says. well you yes get my point. but <laughs> you get what so it's still useful to have this if we're exploring what's down in the hole also knowing that the life forms we're dealing with are not destroyed by just electrical currents which is actually quite impressive Usually that would be disruptive to them, and it was very good thinking on Agent White Lady's part. I, yeah, well, but I just knew I wanted to kill him. Yeah, um, we gotta have I'm thinking a talk, that in addition I. to that, um, tasers might be a good idea, or cattle tasers prods, might be good. or stun sure. guns, or stun yeah. guns. I mean, it's really much of the same thing. But if you're using a cattle prod, you can have a distance weapon. I just don't want the prongs in there. If, if it gets on me, it does. <laughs> That Cordelia way. speaks up suddenly. He's like, fireworks. Just use that. <laughs> I would like to point out. Uh, I, I did a little Are we research. All flamethrowers? No. no. <laughs> I should make some stuff, though. No. I <laughs> see, like, <laughs> stop it. Uh, go Agent ahead, Wild has something to say. I, uh, I, I did a little research last night before going to bed. And, uh, these things are are related to the Migo somehow, and the Migo to the Greys, and the Greys to some sort of hive mind. The Migo, exactly what you said, yeah. That's exactly what they are. The Migo are the just inscrutable creatures. Whoa. We don't understand them. They're not your what Amigos. Are not? They That's are not why your they're Migos. called That's friendlies. Right. <laughs> Could we not? Wrong, wrong. 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 <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I don't think they'd be very open to conversation. But what if we find the one in charge of all this uh, slime? We Pro wouldn't matter? have. We just blow them up. We're gonna well, ask yeah, to speak it, to their manager. Okay. No. Uh, well, no. Sort. Sort. Kind of. No. No. Actually, no. We. We. Uh, <laughs> kind of a take me to your leader situation uh perhaps perhaps we could find the source instead of just going diplomacy? after the slime no not not quite but but taking out the head you're gonna try okay. gunboat diplomacy <laughs> you see he's uh cooper's like okay what is your theory on where the head of this hydra is exactly this uh, monster well, a hydra would be a very poor example of, of one to remove the head from, because once you remove the head, exactly. <laughs> multiple more pop up. We're hoping this is the head of the snake, so to speak. Hmm. So, there, the, this stuff is, is on and in the water. It's coming up from somewhere, being deposited somehow. Yeah. If we can find what is depositing this stuff, we could theoretically go after the source and bypass all of this, uh, uh, what what did you call it? Proto, proto matter? The proto matter, Wait. yeah, entities, well, yes. My estimation is that if it's being deposited, it's coming up from below the surface of the water because at the bottom of the pond is a feeder current. And usually that indicates an underground water system. I'm not sure whether the water there comes from a runoff system or it's more likely that that's coming from an underground aquifer. So we start, and, and that's brilliant. So we start with your first theory of coming up from underground. What if we get some sort of sonar tech that can scan for anomalies under the water? We can secure it's a that. Pond. That's I can easily walk around the area. You're going to want to do a. Um, seismic reading of the entire area to find out where the cave systems are. You could use some sort of sonogram system to map them out to try to get a cave of it, though bear in mind that we'd still be walking around close to it to get it in the presence of apparently ominous helicopters that are an issue. No good ever comes from black helicopters. 
they either contain politicians or professionals. Oh, okay. Well, okay. So, so we we shut down the park for biohazard purposes. And I don't we... want to do that. No, I don't oh, want to give them okay. any warning that we're coming. Cordelia nods That's smart. and Cooper points like, yeah. Once we I'm figure like, out what's down there, then and we're ready to move, then maybe we shut it down. But as a matter of fact, they may already this. be aware. We pose as campers. So I should have some explosives ready to keep if them. If you burn down the park, they won't find your body. I will tell you that right <laughs> yes. now. Lady. I never intended. Look at the to hat. I'm wearing the hat now. <laughs> Agent White, you see, uh, Cooper says it's like, please refrain from I don't know, threatening to blow and burn everything in your path. Okay, uh, that well, usually not... leads to more problems than it solves. I'm not burning you guys. This yeah, don't well, blow them either. If you burn, and blow up everything else. You're inevitably it's gonna be tracked back up back to us inevitably. Uh, you want to keep a low so profile much as work. much as possible. <laughs> Got it. Now, if you want to collapse the case, well, the thing is that if we are going to do out. an underground explosion, gas pockets with the presence of natural gas is perfectly normal. But Wild, I'm sorry, I interrupted you again. Oh uh, no, it, it's fine. I uh, good ideas are good ideas. What if we pose as a, uh, a marine biology group of sorts, checking on the ecology Local of the aquatic area. life? Yeah, Doing exactly. A, a test of the water quality, sure. And 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 Anemone uh, has more than enough experience with water. She can pop up with all sorts of jargon. Or we could sneak in through the hole in the fence that we, you and I found, and walk to the pond without seeing anybody. We can do both. Yeah. Cooper offers. I hear they'll be looking at the water sampling group. Popular. Yeah, you see, Cooper's like they'll they'll be paying attention to whoever's skinny dipping or conducting a water uh, test. Meanwhile, Agent Walter, anybody else care? Will I go down that hole? Can explore if there's like if, it, if there's an actual connection to that pond where we found the the protomatter uh, material. As much uh, as you got I'm your climbing at... gear. Me. Uh, I did. I did want to stop at an REI, but we didn't have a chance to do <laughs> that going, yet. I was promised a special filter wetsuit if I was going to go anywhere near that again because it can climb into my uh, gills. It sounds like we got some shopping to do at least until we go back there. But we should probably wait until quarantine, which is going to be a couple hours probably. There's there's so. plenty of time to plan. Precisely. Yeah. Um, okay. Is everybody so in agreement with this? I'm gonna mm -hmm. say, although I could adequately provide the jargon to conceal myself as someone who's doing water sampling, as I've done that before on behalf of other members of teams. However, it is worth noting that when it comes to wet work and moving in wet environments, as we are likely to encounter in the cave system, I'm probably the most equipped for it. But further to that point. I believe I'm significantly hardier than many of you, as well as more equipped to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with many entities. Hmm. I'm not particularly good with firearms, though. I have a tendency to tangle them in my talons. Counterpoint. <laughs> and I just finished putting, like, the MP5 that I've been cleaning this whole time back together. I got that handled. I'm just <laughs> you down in the hole? I'm not saying you shouldn't go. I'm just saying that the original plan was to put me on Team Aquascience. Whereas if I go down in the hole with you, that means you have an additional person who's equipped to function in those environments. Unfortunately, I don't have night vision, but for example, I can see underwater. Well, that's if we need you down there, we'll call- It's we'll, the Nick we'll Kading membrane. What, we'll describe what we're seeing and hopefully you can tell us what it is mm -hmm. or how to kill it. Yeah, yeah, yes. I'm sure we'll It's always cards. effective to try to describe the unknown horror on over a radio. Yeah. That uh, MP5K, sure by the way, oh, always works for me. <laughs> the the MP5K uh, agent Walter has a um, a kill a lethality radius of about ten percent, and hey! that means what that means in game terms is that if you succeed in your firearms roll, you roll again, and whatever you mm -hmm. roll is the damage. But if you roll beneath or on or beneath ten percent, they're just dead, unless there's some sort of weird entity that just doesn't mm -hmm. die and just takes damage instead. That's what happens. Guns are I could do dangerous, damage. kids. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. I, uh, so as I'm sure we all know, I 
don't handle weapons. Um, unless you have a hitherto ability to um, accu- accurately navigate enclosed areas, it's possible that you are going to end up typecast into team science. I, I, I could. I could deal with that. I'm not so good with uh, science, but I'm trained in anthropology and archaeology. You have glasses, and no one else understands science either. You have a you just need good a lab nice little... coat and, and an EPA badge. And if anyone asks, you could say that you're there for heritage protection to make sure that I don't disturb anything that's involved with the indigenous population. That I can do. So you it's have nice this... to be useful. Yeah, you have this perfect little plan worked out, like, okay, yeah, we're going to go in as this, and we're going to investigate and everything like that. It's all great. Uh, eventually, you hear uh, several cars, or you don't hear shit down here, but eventually, after you finish with your meeting, you hear cars coming from outside, down the road. It's a van. It's a white panel, windowless van. Uh, some technicians are getting out of it. Uh, space suits, head to toe. They're pulling, they're pulling them on. And they're walking into the house. And it's surreal. Like you're walking out of the bathroom. This guy's brushing his teeth. Later comes out, and there's like astronauts inside uh, Al's house. Uh, and they're like, "Hi, quarantine." I'm like, "Sit over there." And they're like, they're corralling everybody together. They're testing everybody, including Albert, the damn dog. <laughs> like, okay, one at a time. Like, you know. I mean, they did uh, eat the bacon. Just saying. They're like taking swabs inside your mouth, whatever, and then they're just running it through a, a machine that they have in the van outside. Eventually, you like come back with the results. Like, okay, it takes several hours to run and process this stuff. Uh, they have a whole contraption back there, but eventually, you come back. It's like, yeah, it looks like um, everything clear. Uh, nobody's contaminated with any of the proto matter, uh, to our knowledge. Everything came back clean, so you're all good to go. Uh, this is like much later in the day, so it, it kind of killed the whole rest of the day for you waiting for the quarantine uh, group to show up. But uh, they essentially clear you, and then uh, following that, they make a call, and then Barnabas calls into the house. Um, does anybody want to talk directly to him, or do you just let Cooper and Cordelia uh, talk to him uh, for you? Put on a speakerphone, whatever. I'm gonna let Cooper and Cordelia do the talking unless there's something I need to intersect with my with my expertise. Agreed. All right. So I tried uh, to tell Barnabas about this cool dream I had last night. You had a what? Cool dream. There was like a boat. I was doing some like sick wake <sighs> wake spins, and then like had a flaming sword that I killed a bunch of fish with. It was awesome. Also, did a little fishing. Okay. That sounds um, wonderful, Winnebago. Wonderful. Yeah, it's great. It's good to hear you again. It's good to talk to you again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I uh, edge away from along. Winnebago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving right along, you see uh, Bar- Barnabas is like, all right, so I'd like a sit re- uh, situation report on what's going on. Quarantine groups finished their analysis. Everything came back okay. Everybody's good. What is the consensus? What is your, what is our, our plan moving forward? based on everything that we've uh, gotten so far. I'm aware of the proto matter being in the wet vac and it's fiery end. No need to uh, brief me on that again. Uh, what's what's the situation on the ground right now? Uh, whatever everybody else is gonna tell you, and you know, when Abago looks at Wild, he's like, in addition to what they're about to tell you, it's also possible that the greys are polluting the uh, country's bacon supplies. Might wanna look into that. <laughs> the line goes silent for a moment. Agent Walter. Some assistance? I don't know where that one came from. <laughs> uh, is he joking or is he serious? I can't really tell. I don't know. <laughs> Let's get, I'm going to add him to the list. <laughs> no, when he said Agent Walter, he, he said it in the tone that says, Agent Walter, please get me off of this call. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, We're going to bring a lot of firepower to Olympia wondering. National Park. <laughs> At least uh, it's not the no campfire season. We may have to blow you, up a helicopter that's on wild. Oh, uh, that's always a good idea. Wait, you tell wait, him your blowing plan up a helicopter? To, <laughs> you tell him your plan to a certain extent, like, look, we want to avoid whatever these helicopters are. They're, they're hovering overhead the constantly around the, the park. Uh, we want to maintain a little profile. We're going to split up. We're going to, you know, go diving into that 
ditch, uh, explored some. We're going to take samples of the water, etc. We're going to go, Anemone is going to go deep diving and try to see if they can get a little bit further and find out what's causing the polluted, the, you know, the protomatter coming out of the water like that. Um, we'll get to the bottom of it. Uh, you know, Agent Wild has a theory that the source of this material is there somewhere and if we find it, we can put an end to it and we can, you know, get back to normal whatever that is. And uh, he's like, all right, if you have your plan already worked out, go ahead and put it into play. Um, I'm going to want a uh, situation report, though, in the next uh, every 24 hours from here on out, because if we're dealing with uh, uh, federal employees at a park, uh, we're going to be impersonating uh, the EPA or something like that. And now we're getting into some muddier uh, territory. So we need to be watch our P's and Q's from here on out. As far as uh, Al's concerned, he's there just for assistance. You know, you're spending your time over there. Um, once we're finished up at, with this particular operation, uh, you're to get everything that you have out of there and we'll meet back up and we'll conduct a debrief afterwards. Uh, in the meantime, maintain operational security as usual and we'll, we'll keep in touch. Uh, and then he hands the, the rest over to Cooper and Cordelia. So you see Cooper's like, all right, we're going to split up, so to speak, and tackle these different aspects of the park in, in terms of investigation. Who's going with who here? After uh, assuming we go and acquire all the necessary equipment, like, you know, the climbing gear and the scuba suit or whatever. Liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen, yeah. Acquired explosives to be able to blow up and... Helicopter? Explosive. Helicopter. No. Yeah. Why are you not going in the no. hole? <laughs> Who is this firefighter that starts fires? Who is this person? <laughs> you gotta fight fire with fires like, sometimes. Yeah. Pyromania this is not is one of those times we're going to a park. The profession. It's a good outlet. It's not, we're not, we're going to a park. We're not setting any fires here. Uh, Agent White, please. Uh, it's like, all right. Hey. Who's going with who here? I, uh, I'm, I'm gonna be the scientist, posing as a scientist. I, uh, well, h historian, you know, a I'm preservationist, sorry. really. You're a preservationist. Here's the badge. Here's your spray bottle. It's a smaller one. It'll give you the same range, but it's easier to hold. Don't get this on you. Make sure you're wearing your gloves. Do not touch anything with the water. If you see anything that resembles rubber outside of the water, don't pick it up or touch it. <laughs> Uh, so Anemone and oh, Wild okay. will be going together to test the water. Uh, who else is on that team? Are the choices go in a hole or shoot down a helicopter? <laughs> I don't think he said anything about options. shooting down helicopters. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. It was the briefest line that was spoken that White Lady just zoomed in on <laughs> the cell should be called the dream team <laughs> was anything else. Um, so what are uh, what, what are our choices to pair off here go into a hole to investigate or go into a, a pond and take water samples fuck going in a hole i'm going to a pond mm -hmm. i'm going to the pond too because white lady thinks the pond equals blowing up helicopter this moment. wait y'all are gonna leave <laughs> walter alone oh walter's alone i can't leave i walter get to alone. kill aliens underground <laughs> with as much firepower as i want to use wow I well, mean, you could go well, with Cordelia, I, or well, Cordelia is exhausted actually. So you're gonna go be going with Cooper, probably Walter. You wanna go down? Right. Like Cooper. Wait, wait. Do you goal. say the blowing up aliens much part? Help. Yeah. And I think it's a very bad idea to send a small team into the obviously ominous dry entrance. White <laughs> lady is going to hear. Go with them. White lady's Holy going to hear. Warlock was here. White lady is going to hear killing aliens. For ranged offensive action. And I don't White lady's going in the hole. Agent yeah, Wild. white lady's going in the hole. White lady just turns around. Wait, killing aliens? That's so much more fun. I don't get to do that. <laughs> I blew up a helicopter a couple months ago. Yeah. Uh, I blew up a helicopter right, so have... like three months ago. <laughs> we have Anemone, uh, Wild, and Winnebago in Team Pond. And then we have Walter, Cooper, and White uh, in Team uh, Hole, as it were. Uh, we would okay. like uh, Team Moria. Timoria. <laughs> that's Fly, that, that's official. Okay. Uh, Are we so you the take the, It's the, this is the evening right now. Uh, as you're going over, after quarantine's finished, they go home. 
Al is like, all right, well, that was an adventure, I guess. Um, if you're going to be staying here for the duration of the op, uh, you're welcome to take any of the rooms upstairs, uh, kick your feet off, make yourself at home, etc. You're going to need some wheels, though, he says. And he points to the door. There's like a little placard there and hanging on these hooks are a set of keys for each one for each car. There's two pickups and like two sedans. It's like some of them are pieces of shit. Don't use them, but most of them will work. We should take Ish. the trucks. Um, okay. Are we doing this in the evening? That's up to you. I don't know about you, but I just had someone stick a really long Q-tip into my gills, and I wouldn't mind taking another saline bath because I feel really, really gross right now. You're about to get grosser if you, if you go into that pond, so... Did you eat the bacon? It, yes, but I'll be wearing the, a wet suit, and I'm going to be taking a saline bath out of that anyway, but it feels really weird to have someone stick a finger or a Q-tip or something into your gills. Don't do that. Yeah, it's like all right. Well, I'm ready to go whenever you are. Cordelia needs a fucking nap anyway. We can, if we're gonna do this anytime soon. We could probably do that tomorrow morning or in the afternoon when it, there's sufficient daylight, perhaps. I don't we should know. go during That's the day. That's probably a good idea. Evil I don't believe anyone has natural day. night vision. You should probably mention that. Like, yeah, sure. I'm gonna wait in the car while you all go spelunking or whatever the fuck it is that you're doing. If alien murder. Saving the day. <laughs> uh, or dying. <dies>. Right. <laughs> are we doing settling for another night of sleep and going in the morning, or are we going right away? I I think it's better to go in the daytime. Uh, I feel like maybe, we'll be at a disadvantage. Maybe sundown. Because it doesn't matter. Oh, closer team, to the end of the day tomorrow. It doesn't matter for Team Hole. So much as team mm -mm. Out, up up top that can be seen by people. Stop doing yourself an injustice. You are definitely team Moria. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, team Melon. <laughs> Excellent. So you wait until the later I half believe of the day tomorrow it's after all Melon. night's rest. <laughs> Melon. Uh, <laughs> you have a good night's rest for the most part. Um, Winnebago, roll percentile. Me. Could I mention an action? I don't want to disrupt things, but my character sure. is definitely taking some more quality time in the bathtub with her statue. Oh, same. Do make a power roll, please. You know, most people use a rubber duck. And <laughs> I think this particular time she is going to make a small sacrifice to it of blood and spit. You spit on it and bleed on it. Oh, that's good. That'll definitely increase your and chances. And I got an 85, which means that I was over my pow. Over? Okay, by how much? Uh, my power is 60, I got 85, so 25? You made it. So, yeah, you, this time you, like, spit at it, bleed on it a little bit. You say a couple, you mumble a couple things <laughs> underneath your breath in the language that you know, that you, or that you can remember at least. And uh, everything starts to get a little weird inside the, the bathtub, and you start remembering. You start remembering the beach side when you were picked out of that group of deep ones that they shot to death after they summoned it to the shores. You remember the woman with the bite marks and the scars. You remember the labs. You remember all the the, uh, the derogatory things they called you, the way they treated you. Um, you remember the raid that was conducted on Mars Technology uh, Facility, the, al the clacks and alarms, the gunfire, the fire, uh, that spread throughout the laboratories. Dr. Pendergast screaming, the sprinkler systems going off, lots of shouting and screaming. And you remember shutting down at the time, not you know, able to uh, process everything that was happening. You remember being led around by somebody, Nancy. You remember the uh, outbreak of gunfire, the way she shielded you from it uh, when the uh, security tried to secure you and repel the people that were attacking the facility, the enemy as they were known. Uh, you moved away, but and eventually you were, you remember getting cornered by the security team. You remember how they were going to uh, essentially just liquidate you and Nancy and 
cover up everything that has been going on that was going on in this building for decades. You remember hearing Dr. Pendergast like, no, no, screaming, like uh, trying to protect you in any way that he could. And then you remember, uh, then everything was like a blur. And when you next awakened, everybody around, a lot of the people that were around you were dead, bleeding out of different orifices in their face, torn to shreds. Your claws were extended, your teeth, uh, were, your mouth was open, blood, you tasted the coppery taste of blood in your mouth, blood dripping down your uh, your claws. You looked over and you saw Nancy feasting, eating uh, on the, uh, the corpses of the security team. And um, my character would thank whatever lesser gods and bits her mythology that she has fragmented around Dagon are for their protection. <laughs> yeah, you remember uh, the injury that Nancy sustained before you were pulled out of the facility. You remember one of the last things she asked you to do was to perform the the ritual of feast, the changeling feast, where you had, which she she, uh, she told you that what she what she had in her head, all the information that she had, decades of information needed to be uh, needed to survive this moment, and that you were the only one who could do it. She apologized to you for having to put you in this situation. She did everything she could to calm you before you consumed her brains. You remember those times. You remember all the trauma that you experienced. And for a moment, you remember the times before that, the times when you were free in the water with your people. You remember the intrusions that you felt regularly by those who remained above. Uh, the pollution that your <coughs> home experienced before they called you out before they summoned you to the surface, like a siren song, like a butterfly, like a, like a moth to a flame, before they tried to extinguish you. You were one of the few ones that they decided to take captive, however, one of the ones that they found fascinating specimens, as Dr. Pendergast put it. They wanted to open you up and study your insides and experiment on you and do all sorts of terrible things. Dr. Pendergast, though, had a different perspective. He wanted to see if he could make you like them. And to some extent, he succeeded. In other ways, he failed. You remember that. Well, sanity. Hmm. You know, make my sanity roll. I get an 83. Cool. You only lose two. Yay. You're... you're... <laughs> You go on quite the roller coaster ride, and you're just kind of like staring at the uh, the ceiling of the bathtub, of the, of the bathroom, in the bathtub, just kind of like remembering all of this flooding back into you. And you see the, you hear the whispery uh, southern accent voice of Nancy, like, "I tried to shield you best I could, but I couldn't shield you from that." Well, Nancy. Everyone has to grow up sometimes. You're right. Sometimes we grow I up. I'm really way too honored fast. that you had me do the feast. I know I'm not of your people. It she's means a lot that you there. trust me with it. Yeah, she kind of like looks down. She sees she smiles a little bit, but you can tell just with the rapport that you have with her that she feels really, really bad about having you do that. Winnebago. Um, mm -hmm. Go ahead. I succeeded at my saying it, or my, what What did you, I rolled a 33. You rolled a 33? Okay, you got it. So I didn't mean to interrupt the uh, uh, panel. Go ahead. Uh, do you have something else to add to Miss Nancy? Panda. Panda. Me? What? You asked if I had something else to add? <laughs> yeah, sorry. I, 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 I didn't mean to interrupt. Did you have something to add to Nancy? Um, She just said thank you for Nancy, and she was going to say um, 
would it be all right if the time comes to teach someone else to do the feast if I can't carry this on so that we can be sure that what you need carries? We may have to. In this line of work, it's too dangerous. We have to, we have to pass on what we know. Too much is at stake to, to lose it. So yes, for anyone who's willing, when we can do it, we need to we need to pass on the knowledge. Yes. I know. It's sacred. Don't just teach it to anyone. Now we can switch over to you, Winnebago. Uh you made it, apparently. Mm-hmm. God damn it. All right. You're back over there again. Uh you're just you're inside the building now. You got away from the deep ones, but <laughs> cool dream you're again. bleeding okay. out. Oh shit. You're just like, oh. Fuck. <laughs> like um, you look down and like shirts bloody pants everything and just like ugh. you're having to like drag yourself through the house uh in your mind the 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 room where everyone sort of hovers out of and meets around the table mm-hmm. almost everybody is there almost there's uh walter there's agent white there's warlock this is in the Dave random Weber. house that i jumped into no, this is a random brownstone that you crawled into bleeding and in your mind okay. this is what's happening. Like you okay. see all these people like coming it's visually speaking, this is what happens Got in it. your mind. These different personalities come out and they meet around the table and they're all throwing things at you, saying things, uh, vying for control at times. Uh if you said I'm bleeding out, I'd just use the sword to like carterize the wound as best as I could. Uh... Yeah, you kind of like focus on it, and you know that you're you're losing, uh, your your life force is ebbing away from you when you do that. But if you seal the the wounds, and you feel like you can take a breath for a second, and then you hear uh, the voices of those in your head speak up. This is the future that uh, has occurred because of what happened. You knowingly reach into the uh, into your pockets searching for messages messages that maybe you forgot one of them says when you meet him you need to kill him he asked us to kill his brother it's going to be the hardest thing you'll ever have to do but you have to do it when you go back you need to kill carlos Okay. You wrote it. You recognized your own handwriting. Right. Or rather, this was somebody else's handwriting. This is who you used to be's handwriting. Oh. Okay. Um, is there anything around? This is the what's left of an old home uh, that was abandoned before the whole place flooded. Mm-hmm. Before, you know, the ash fell and everything the fires uh yeah there's the the, the old pictures on the floor uh on the counter Uh, it looks like somebody left in a hurry and it's been like 20 years i I will look and see if there's like any non-perishable foods and fork that down real fast yeah you can find some in here uh (laughs) you make it this is all this is how you live now like you you scavenge what you can, stick it in the book backpack, get on a boat, or find another way out of here. Um, and then you keep going. You keep going to that one place, the church. The church where you know it all went down, where it occurred mm. when the end of the world began. Back then. It's only a matter of time before you eventually have to project back. And you have to do what you're told what you told yourself, what you promised yourself that you would do. That boy is going to end the world. And someone commanded you to kill him. Carlos. Precisely. Okay. Snap out of it. You're like, it's three in the morning again. You can't sleep. It's getting old. This shit's getting old. (laughs) You're getting old. All right. So you uh, you try to go back to sleep as best as you can. You no, he'll really, go downstairs. Really restless time. <laughs> drink milk straight out of the carton, and then pee and go back to bed. 
<laughs> While Is you're the, drinking uh, out of the carton, or bar, bar, so that's what I Bernie, do. When I wake up Bernie goes up night. to the, the, the he, Bernie hears you, so he pads <laughs> downstairs and he looks up at you like, "You're gonna give me some of that?" <laughs> uh, yeah, I pour some milk in his bowl and we'll um, find like I don't know, some deli meat or something and toss it to him. A sausage. Cool. All right. You make good friends with Bernie. With Bernie, uh, eventually, you, you make yourself back to sleep. But you feel like shit the next day. You're at minus twenty percent to everything. Ooh. It's like uh, Cordelia is, <laughs> mentioned something as you come down. Like you look like shit. You look worse than I did yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> that's the price of having cool dreams about being a. Post-apocalyptic something. Fish. Cooper's like, we got a problem. Oh. I spoke to Barnabas about the Warlock situation. Uh-huh. Don't know where he's at. Don't know where the tapes are at. Don't know where the transcripts are. Okay. We need to go. F- we, he says, and he looks to himself and Cordelia. He needs, somebody needs to go looking for him. I figure that might be us. You guys already have your plan. You should go ahead and proceed as planned. Yeah, we got We're team... going to try to hunt him down and see what, what the hell happened to Warlock. He just, he seemingly went AWOL. When we checked the records at that hotel, um, well, there are no records at that hotel. It's like he never checked in. Hmm. Weird. I mean. Yeah, exactly. So we need to be careful now. Understood? Right. I'll let Team Friend and Team Moria know what's up. Yeah. Totes. Yeah. Watch your backs, he says. And they they are up early and they are getting to work. <laughs> Apparently this message came in overnight and they're like, all right, we got to we gotta hop to it and try to track down uh, Warlock and the suitcase ASAP. So they're out the door in the SUV, leaving you to the rest of the vehicles. You take two vehicles, you take one. What do you want to do? Yeah, I think two we're Two teams, two, two vehicles? Two teams, two vehicles to the... Um, okay. Take the trucks. So that we got very something that can good, go over rough terrain. Good. So Walter and White are going <clears throat> in a hole, and Anemone, Wild, and Winnebago go to the pond. Okay. We'll start with um, Team Pond. Anemone, Wild, Winnebago. You, know. you have all the things that you needed to get. You spent a good day getting all the rest of the stuff that you needed. It's uh, daytime. People still milling about. Uh, how do you want to conduct yourself at the pond? you get there um very official i'm genuinely taking samples for good purposes while examining doing appropriate protocol like i'm using a long net properly gloved up um if anyone asks i'm tasking wild with better social skills to shoo them away i'm hoping wild has better social skills but in any case, I'm wearing like proper protective gear and everything. I have my mm-hmm. um, modified wetsuit with gel filters. Um, and <laughs> I'd start by taking samples. I'd see if I could find some of the substance. I'd leave the other people to worry about looking for helicopters because I don't really have any way to hit things in the sky anyway. <laughs> sure. Um, um. That's a them problem. And then once I'd adequately taken samples, tested some of the substance on them, then it would be my job to go back in there and take a peek down on the hole protected by the wetsuit. And I'm going to assume if I encounter anything under the water, I should just stab the shit out of it or use, um, like I'm thinking, um, I don't know, underwater fish repellent or something. Fish I'm not sure uh, what you could use as an underwater weapon other than yeah. like a spear gun and my talons. Well, if you yeah, were wearing a full wetsuit, then you just, you know, taser. Like mm. a waterproof taser. That's so. true. They do make electrical stun stuff you can use underwater. So I'd probably have one of those to try to keep whatever it is away from like me. the long prong and, ones or something that you hold at a Yeah, yeah. longer pronged cool. ones. Right. Um, Scuba store. Shopping. These are right. popular in SeaWorld. <laughs> yeah. About that. Uh, so yeah, you, uh, you eventually make your way down uh, under the water. You see now that that tugging feeling that you felt before is actually coming from a large hole of some sort of like a, it looks like it's uh, natural perhaps, which is a little that odd. That was my guess, that that's the feed mm-hmm. to feed the pond. And yeah. the water level has dropped considerably since it was in the past, which means that it's possible the water's been diverted or it's possible that 
the water table is dropped because global warming. Right. Um, uh, you, it's big enough that you can actually go into on your own. Now, it seems flow, like I'd so be sensible enough to have gotten a camera of the kind yeah, like underwater camera, you can sure. send forward. So that's something that would probably be sent to scout first and footage being sent to people upstairs to keep sure. an eye on. So with my little GoPro, eventually I would start scouting down the hole. Okay, go that, do that. Uh, you make your way down there and it's dark, it's pitch black, but your eyes adjust naturally. Uh, and yeah, you see like there's stuff accumulated towards the bottom of this, like gravity just pulled it down. Uh, mm -hmm. And you look at it closely and sure enough, it's that same protomatter stuff, but it's in bits and pieces in places. It's not uh, whole enough to coalesce into something more than just like, you know, debris or whatever, but it seems to like stick to the rocks down here as the runoff is kind of coming from a particular direction out into that pond. You keep going. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to keep going. I'm pretty sure that this stuff just leads down into the hole. It gets further down, yeah. Eventually, yeah. it comes back um, up, though. And... Uh, well, I mean that eventually, I'm assuming the two entrances collapse. Mm -hmm. And I would be observing the team, you know, if I go too far into here, I'm basically in the hole anyway. Yep. Is this uh, you start leading it up. Because uh, you actually see the day, uh, it doesn't look like daylight. It's strong light, but it's not daylight. And you look up and you see it, like if reflecting above in the water above you, so you're like, well, that's interesting. You start moving up towards the light. Agent Wild, you're outside and you hear, a, <clears throat> can I help you? You see, looking up at the rock overlooking the, the pond, there's a park ranger and there's a, somebody else who's down on the ground, like a deputy or something like that. They're walking up, like, hello. Oh, uh, Hi, I'm here actually to do some research. Hey, we know your buddy. Mm -hmm. By the way, quick question to everybody. Did everybody take a spray bottle? Yeah, I would have handed them out and they're in better <laughs> yeah. containers. That's what I kind of thought. Okay, just checking. I thought I'd ask. Uh, yeah, so this guy comes up and he's like, hi, how you doing? Uh, Park Ranger, he points to the badge and he's like, um, what's going on here? Oh, uh, we're just doing some research on the local ecology here. Oh, and, fantastic. Uh, yeah. Where, and what organization are you from? I thought it was the EPA. <laughs> the FEPA? Aquatic Heritage oh. Foundation. Oh, the, 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 Nobody the, fucking the, cares the, about the FDA. <laughs> the Aquatic Heritage Foundation. Oh, <clears throat> excellent. Can I see some ID, please? Oh, yeah, and he'll pull out the fake badge. He looks at it. Okay. Uh, is anyone else here with you? Uh, yes, we actually have a, a diver oh. who was yep. mm -hmm. cleared, and that's why yep. I'm here. Yeah, I'm actually making sure that... Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we're doing... Here? A, a... Any points to the pond, or any points to the further down to like where Lake, uh, Lake Hades is located? Well, we're actually doing some research surveys on whether or not there are interconnecting caves because we have the theory that before water was here, <coughs> which, you know, prior to glacial migration, there were actually tribes that would utilize the caves that were above the surface of the, the, the sea level. And so we're actually trying to find some artifacts and maybe even some petroglyphs to confirm this theory. You can read about it on the internet. On the internet. Mm -hmm. Um, Roll persuasion with a plus twenty five percent for that okay. little bit that you ad lib there. That was very good. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I rolled a ninety eight. That's great. Do you have a re roll? Oh, I do. Mm. Oh, do you want to use it? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Use it. <laughs> Uh, I think I know what that means. Roll alertness, please. A 90. I rolled a 90. What are the oh, odds? No. <laughs> not useful. 23, I which is... I did not touch your dice. Above my... Alertness is it's 21. It's above your alertness? Get I... the fuck out of here. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm only good I at you... research. 
that's fine. Roll a constitution check, please. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> okay. Oh, I got a 29. My constitution is 25. It? Yes. Oh, <laughs> man. All right. So you don't go completely unconscious when the taser hits you from behind. Oh, but you do, <laughs> but you do like, oh shit, and like you like jerk away as you see the uh, the park ranger that was up there is now down here behind you with a taser ready. And when you jerk away from him, the other one takes the opportunity to hit you with the other one as well. Oh geez, what the what's going on here? Did uh, he park rangers? Uh, park rangers, sure they are. Yeah. Well, uh, constitution <clears throat> check, please. Park mobies. <laughs> Messed up. Does anyone think to radio anything to me? Uh, you would probably be hearing everything that's going on, just so you're aware of what's on the surface. Uh, so, Ar- Winnebago, uh... where are you in all this? Did you go down Team Moria? <laughs> I thought Winnebago was with me. Yeah, I'm with... Yeah, I'm Winnebago with... is haplessly with Team Pond and things going very oh, poorly. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Uh, yeah, you see these par- two park rangers come from like, hey, can I see some ideas? Like, oh, yeah, well, you see the water table. Psst, oh, shit. Oh, uh, how do you respond? Uh, kung fu them in the face. <laughs> Roll. 29. 29? That hits. Roll damage. Uh, how do you roll damage? It's on your sheet. Uh, I believe it's going to oh. be 1d3, unless you're extremely strong, in which case you're probably going to roll like a d4 with a bonus. Uh, um <clears throat> He shoots you next Two damage. with a taser. How much? Two. Two. Okay. Yeah. Pooh, you pop him really good, and he's like, "Oh, this motherfucker!" You hear the the one that was about to shoot uh, Wild because Wild is kind of like, "Oh shit!" Staggering off, he turns the other one to you and fires the stun gun. You know, roll Constitution, please. Nice twenty nine again. Fuck. All right. Wow. You guys what are these are super vulnerable. <laughs> yeah. You're just like, I mean, you're not completely unconscious, but it, you just got hit with a taser. So you're just like, ah, shit. Like you're awake. Uh, and you, but you like your muscles clam up and you're just like, oh, you get that. You get knocked down to the ground to, on one knee. Uh, and that's when the guy drops the sun gun, pulls his sidearm, pull, points it at you. The other one points it at wild. Sure you are. He says, and he's like, and he gets on the radio and he's like, we got two over here, ready uh, to bring them in. Back to you two, Agent White, Agent Walter, you're at the <laughs> hole. You uh, get your gear ready and you get ready to descend into this darkness. Um, you don't have to make any checks. It's not like life threatening or anything, you're not racing against time. You take your time to get down there and you get down to the bottom. It is deep, dark, dark down here. Uh, you bring out your flashlights, I imagine, or if you have like I have a one like strapped on to helmet. the MP5. Excellent. All right, Agent White, you have one as well. Yeah, I just have one, not strapped to a gun. Hmm. But I'm holding on to my orb the entire time. Orb. Excellent. So you make your way down here, and it is dark, uh, but you. You, as you're making your way through this dark cavernous uh, area. Oh, are we in like ankle deep water or anything? Um, at best, ankle deep water. Yeah. It's okay. Not, so it, it hasn't. Not much water gets down here. So it doesn't make much sense for us to try to sneak because we're going to be splashing anyway. You can try. Probably the get the negative, but. <laughs> the Always the try right? sneaking. Worst case scenario is we get plus one at the end of the game. <laughs> you know what? Let's go for it. Excellent. Yeah, I'll try sneaking right. too. I did not get very four, good. Cause I rolled a six. You rolled a six? God damn, that's good. Uh, what do you got? Uh, uh that definitely wild. failed. You failed. Fantastic. All right. So you make it down into the depths of this darkened, uh, twisting corridor, rough honed walls. Uh, rocks everywhere. And eventually, you get to this area. That when you when you look around, you see that it's you know rock walls and ceilings and floors and stuff. But you see what 
something glimmers in the darkness when you're the, the light from your flashlight hits it uh whatever it is it's made out of metal and it's kind of jutting out of the ground at an angle it has a very um streamlined shape to it you see several of them jutting they out look of the look like ground. r2d2 Kind they of? do not look like R2-D2. They don't, they don't look like machines. They look like a slate of metal that is very highly reflective. How tall uh, big are they? About as tall as you. That's really big. I was thinking these were like trash can size. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Ooh. No, no, they're actually quite big, actually. And you're like, wow, what the fuck is this? These are the weirdest mineral deposits you've ever seen in your life. Uh, roll alertness, please. Both of you. Oof. Missed it by ten. That was a success with a nine. Um, you you you're scanning, you're like observing what's going on. You don't know what you're looking at, but there are you know, like seams in the metal that you can't make out. But there there seems to be like a pattern to them. Uh, Agent Walter, Agent Y, you're not paying attention to any of that nonsense because something just moved on the periphery of your vision, and you kind of like swivel over, you point your gun at it or whatever, the flashlight, and see one of these. Standing there, observing you. Jet black eyes. There's a metal thing moving, floating next to it. And it just sort of ripples as it seems to be changing. It seems to be inverting and uninverting, constantly changing like a trapezoid or something like that. Um, and it's just looking at you. Do you alert Agent Walter, who is otherwise occupied? I'm going to alert him by using my little orb thingy and trying to merc this thing. This is why I want to try to here. shoot it with the the the, the electric oh, thing. Oh yeah, try and shoot it. Roll with the a natural. Thing. And and that was an eight. You got yes. an eight. You rolled beneath your unnatural. Yeah. The proboscises come out like they puncture your arm, and the discharge comes out. Okay. Uh, you Mega Man think... now. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. what you think. Uh, roll Ooh. lethality. Uh, all right. One sec. That's just rolling a 100. Percentile, yeah. Okay. And just tell me what you got. 16. 16 is within lethality. Uh, one out of the two is struck by this discharge coming from the metal ball, and it instantly just goes up in a flame, just blows apart. The other one doesn't seem to care, though. And the little thing that's floating next to it, he immediately looks at you, and the thing twists and shape forms into a shape and it open it opens the side of it that you didn't see before and there's some sort of a glyph inscribed there that lights up i need you to give me an alertness check the alertness check of your life right now oh goodness because you need Wait. to be wherever this thing isn't looking at oh goodness do, do i make this check or no oh you hear the three and you look oh, what did you get 33. 33 is, that a is 51. That's a success. That's a critical. That's a critical success. Wow. So you are extremely oh. lucky because as soon as this thing looks at you, you move instinctively out of the way. You're not where it's looking. The thing that was behind you, one of those metal struts that's sticking out of the ground, crumbles under some invisible grav gravitational force and like a tin can, like a like a soda can. Just boosh, and slams into the wall and breaks the piece and just dents and slides down. Uh, it then focuses its its look on Agent Walter. Walter, you turn around. The Fire one, immediately. You see this thing and you're like, oh my god. <laughs> Both of you roll sanity. They're oh, back. This, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. And I rolled my sanity uh, exactly. Yeah, oh, no. Sanity? That's, that's a complete failure. 78. <laughs> you lose, uh, roll 1d4, Devin. You lose that much sanity. Uh, All right. 
Agent Walter, you only lose one. But yeah, you turn around, and you're like, fuck that thing. There's two of these things and two of these little floating ball things. Um, roll uh, firearms, please. Roll to shoot the alien. Hey, hey, Braze, it's me. Let's play the counting game. <laughs> My 22, we're, we're playing count the shells. <laughs> Wait, you said 22? Yeah, nice. 22, yeah. 22, roll of shit, roll of lethality. Oh, yeah, that's a that's a hit. Uh, eighty one. So nine. Eighty one. So nine damage. That's mm-hmm. that's enough. Yeah, you just ba 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 ba, and just, this thing just you know shudders, falls onto the ground. Those things are still floating in the air though. And you see, like, there's two dead aliens. One of them is just blasted, you know, just completely disintegrated by that that weapon. Um, Devin, you also lose. Two hit points from that. As okay. It seems to be using your your life force to power it. Weird, huh? Huh. Strange. You're just like huh, huh, huh. that. Whatever those things are, that it's, that sigil has the capacity to just destroy anything in its path, and it almost killed you. Uh, such a rush. You uh, you slowly come to this realization, and then you see there's an ambient sort of light that's growing further down the corridor, uh, adjacent to the large chamber. And it seems to be getting brighter and brighter. On the walls, you see silhouettes of these forms. More of them are coming. Back to Nemini. You're floating up towards the light. Eventually, you break the surface of the water and you look around and you see that you're in some sort of a chamber. It's not natural though. And when you realize you're inside of a large circular aperture that seems to be open. And when you're looking up, you see there are all like these coils and things hanging from the ceiling, but also things, people. One of them looks a lot like Lindsey Grimes. So that's where we'll stop. <laughs> I was right. going to say, I-, I go below the surface of the water again. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, excellent. Well, that's all the time we have uh, for this session, everyone. I hope everyone here and those watching enjoyed the show. We'll continue our descent into conspiracy horror next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you enjoyed tonight's program, feel free to check out our awesome uh, adventures and terrifying tales uh, like Black Void tomorrow under Nebulous Skies. Uh, we also have Actum Cthulhu on Wednesdays. Uh, Mage uh, The Awakening, Defiance, Pathfinder, Undying on Thursday. Friday, Call of Cthulhu, Mass of Nyarlathotope. Uh, also, Scarred Lands, if you're into uh, awesome adventures. For Saturday, we have the Dungeons & Dragons Usurpers of... I can't read that. Uh, Ruination. Uh, SCP, the RPG. And I believe we are beginning Phantasmagoria, the cult of divinity lost story this uh, coming Sunday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So stay tuned for that. Uh... And now for those of you who uh, stayed until after the credits rolled, it is time to vote for favorites. Everyone, every player in this game can select another as their favorite for that session for any reason. Recipients get a reward in the form of a re-roll for their character. View- for uh, viewers, voting is open as well. You can, you can choose a new favorite each week for all of our shows, but you have to be quick because voting ends after the closing reel finishes. So be sure to cast your votes and switch chat as soon as you can. For every viewer uh, vote, players receive an extra willpower point for their characters, which is good when you're losing sanity. Beginning with Sean, who played Winnebago and other people and, in the future. Um, uh, yeah, that favorite? was that was tough. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go with Walter because he said, "Remember your fishing training; uh, it'll save you." Basically, when I was in the future, <laughs> and that was funny. So, and then nice. I just imagine my character like has a flaming sword and a fishing rod. So, I'm, I'm yeah. good for that. Walter, nice. Uh, and Ben, who uh, played uh, Walter right. Sumi, who's your favorite? Uh, I will be doing a somewhat selfish pick and voting for White Lady because she's ride or die <laughs> in that tunnel with me, and I need her 100%. to have re rolls. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good reason. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you you made that for real. Yeah, good job. Uh, <laughs> Devin, who played uh, White Lady this evening, who's your favorite? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Winnebago just for the one sticky note saying hey 
<laughs> the sticky note stuff is great. It's great, yeah. Um, Ambrose, who uh, played uh, Agent Wild, who's your favorite? Oh, geez. <laughs> it was so good. All of it was so good. <laughs> um. <laughs> <sighs> Crap. I you know, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to Panda for possibly endangering the party in the future by connecting with her fruits and sacrificing <laughs> spit and blood to the statue. What? Or maybe it's helping you, who knows? Uh, I mm, and of course mm. <laughs> and of course uh Panda who played an uh, anemone uh this evening who's your favorite uh, once again it's a super tough call i mean the fact that literally everybody else's response to me going to try to rob the storeroom and being obviously interested in the statue was everybody picking something worse and doing <laughs> something more obvious um yeah. um this particular time i'm gonna go with Ambrose, just because their earnest commitment to what they're doing, but um, the Smith and Wesson is our HR definitely gets an honorable <laughs> mention too. Because oh my gosh, that was a great line. That was yes, hilarious, thank you. That was and perfect. I was very much enjoying uh, Walter's complete like I am not putting up with this shit. You could be spouting all sorts of weird nonsense at me, and I'm just going to react like you're weird. And, <laughs> like don't poke me in the gills. Listen, he's got a fishing buddy, potentially. It's really into True. fishing. Yes. Super into fishing. And he doesn't want it to get ruined. Yes. What? Well, yeah, well, definitely. Excellent. Well, thank you all for watching. I've been Eric at Modern Recluse Online. You can find me back here on uh, uh, next month. Tomorrow for Black Void. Yes. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, big thanks as always to our patrons for supporting what we do. If you want to be awesome and do the same, check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash Tales and keep up to date on what we're doing throughout the month by checking up the calendar on warpletales.com. And thanks to you, our viewers and fans, for tuning in. As usual, maintain situational awareness, keep your intel compartmentalized, and always watch your backs. Good night, everybody. <laughs>